back. We're so stoked. Hello, we're Girl with Guts Glory here for season four. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. Hello. A 10 month hiatus. Oh my God. Was yes. that how long it was? Yes. yes. Wow. Except for Since um, our just last at a Comic Con. Just yes. the one shot. But yeah. It's so exciting. We have a brand new setup here. We have an amazing team on board with us. A lot of familiar faces. We have Steve, Melanie. We'll, we'll give shouts out to all, shouts out to everybody. Uh, not too far after the show's done today, but we're so stoked to have you guys here. We have some awesome things like giveaways, so stay tuned for that. For example, yes. right after the first break, we're going to be giving away a player's handbook. Ooh. I kid you not, oh my God. which is very exciting. You do have to be present in chat in order to get it, so make sure you stay tuned. Um, it's exclamation mark raffle, I believe, and um, there's no sort of restriction on country. Like, we'll send it to you. You just whisper to D&D online, and then we'll send it to you within a week. So get that player's handbook, you guys, and also stick around for fun storytelling time. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, we're going to be picking up from a very long hiatus. We have been through a lot, uh, not just as people and players, but as, like, actual storytelling. So I'm going to try to get you guys up to speed and also uh, everybody else can kind of hear and experience what they've been up to during their hiatus. Um, so I would love for you guys to introduce yourselves, uh, your names, your character's name, as well as your race and class, just so everybody can get familiar in case they're not. So, uh, and bear with us please if there's any technological difficulties. Again, new studio. You wanna start? Hey everyone, <laughs> I'm Ali Gonino. I play Lilith Lucena and I'm a tiefling bard. Hi, I'm sick. My name is, <laughs> I'm funny. No, I'm not. My name is Rachel Seely, and I'm playing Moira Mwirin, your haughty noble paladin. Haughty. Haughty. Ooh. Hot noble paladin. Hot noble. Hot. Hi, I'm Erica Fermina, and I am playing La La Lemon Boots, your pixie ranger. And that was an airplane. Woo! Yes, or in this land, as Satine likes to call it, Griffin Riders, which I really do enjoy. <laughs> so I might have to take that one, Satine, because it's yeah. great. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kellen Coleman. I play Dranishka Theodrius. I am a dragonborn barbarian. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alice Gretchen, and I play Rowan of the Land of Holy Hawk, Forest Nerd Druid. And we're all level seven. <laughs> level seven. Level seven. Yeah. I have so much help. Also, we're missing one of our one of our uh, teammates here, two of them, but one in particular, Kim, who is not here today, and Sujata, uh, who play two wonderful characters. So uh, hopefully we'll wrangle them in very soon. I think Kim will be here next week and yep. throughout the rest of the season, so stay she's tuned. She's in Paris. Yeah, don't feel too so bad don't for feel her. too yeah. bad that she doesn't yeah. <laughs> She's in France. If anyone's in France, oh, you know, no, you want to go to the... Oh, no, she's in Strasbourg. She's in Strasbourg. No, she just went... Just kidding. She's, kidding. she's in Strasbourg now. Uh, she's uh, abound. Relevant anyway. information. Abound. Abound. So nice. I just went to Solvang for like two days oh and that God. felt like Europe. Ooh. So that was nice. I highly felt, recommend going. Solvang felt like Europe. You know, you're in Hollywood when you think that. <laughs> Needed it does really. But um, I'm going to Solvang at the end of the month. Oh, you, we'll have to Solvang. talk about that. If you've been to Solvang, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have wonderful minis from Wiz, uh, Wiz Kids who painted them. They look fantastic. 3D um, printed. Down here, custom. 3D printed them. With our face dope. to us. My dragonborn has my head on its belt. So <laughs> anyone can see that. It's pretty it's really cool. Easy. We're yeah. action figures. Yeah. And amazing maps uh, with Mats by Mars. So ch yeah. definitely check them both out. They're fantastic. They support us. Uh, support them if you can. All right. And so from that point, I think we're going to dive back into season four of Girls Guts Glory. I'm very excited. I'm using new sounds today that Ooh. I have never done. So bear with me as I'm learning them. Sirenscape. We okay. love new sounds. All right. Let's I love see. Sirenscape. I didn't know we were using them. Do you hear it? Do you hear the sounds? Yes. Yes. Faintly. It's happening faintly. Okay, so here we begin. It um, hasn't been easy, needless to say. After venturing through Cholt, only to be betrayed by the assumed guide, you've been on quite the journey. A teleportation circle sent you nearly halfway around the world to Baron Forest and Thay. There you parlayed with a distorted kind of beast with one eye and interacted with desecrated runes, but still there was no way out. And now you wanted a way out and also had a vengeance on that. But thankfully, before journey journeying too far, you met two wandering travelers along the way, Dranishka and Fana, who seemed to be searching for answers as well. Maybe different ones, maybe for a good time, but either way, they are too looking for something. 
With this path taking you underground and into the belly, uh, into the underbelly of the Hexdon, um, the only hex big, uh, Hexblade College on Lefaren, uh, you, you, yep, yeah, you, you stumbled upon Lilith's frat bro kind of cousin there, and Todd, who promised you guys a way out as well, um, as long as you took care of some professors of his to make sure that he could graduate with the uh, the class that he had on. It's a town full of slavery, Byzantine. So once you guys took care of this old man, Sax, as you called him, uh, who then soon became Mr. Bubbles, thanks to Fauna resurrecting him from the dead, uh, you guys began on a quest to get a ship and get out of Thay. Uh, make your way across the Sea of Fallen Stars. Though this was no easy task, you did so easily enough by schmoozing, discovering that old man Sax had made his way across the sea recently, so you were able to get both his crew and the ship without too much trouble. And after some very tactful discussion and plot manipulation, you could persuade the former crew to join the sailing back across, as well as purchase a slave in Byzantine with some good scouting skills, mm -hmm. though voiceless. So this ragged, ragged crew of you with a dull half-orc wine, a chipper loving dwarf Walton, a robust, young, yet tongueless human here, a.k.a. Gailan, which you guys eventually found out thanks to Sending Stones, uh, being able to mentally communicate with him what his name was, a forlorn vampire named Tamith, and a timid human bookworm named Etna. All of you guys together made your way across these treacherous waters, which included many things, such as Sharksbane's Wall, meeting mermaids in Mithnantar, uh, being trailed by very weird looking fish folk, uh, with massive seaweed creatures following you, underwater en enemies of ginormous size. Um, you crashed nearly into a shipwreck, uh, surrounded with ghosts, and you interacted with very strange gnomes uh, and a God-touched lighthouse. So all of this is just a gloss of what happened last season, and it was nearly a month of travel. It was a, a dangerous, sometimes beautiful journey, but it all led you guys to Sembia, to the shores of Selgant, where a certain someone was waiting and upset that you had messed with their plans. Frustrated with this annoying thorn on her side, which was all of you guys, and having Saxon have been disposed with her plans, she decided Valindra, the woman who had originally sent them in the teleportation circle, showed up and quickly disintegrated Walton in a very large combat in an arena in Selgant. Poor Janishka had developed a relationship with him over the course of the month on the Sea of Fallen Stars, so that was a hard ending there. First love, only love. And that was really just the start of a much more difficult battle. However, thanks to a very special book that Fauna received from the God Touch Lighthouse, um, touched by Lathander, her god himself, uh, Valindra was able to be evaporated in the air. It's kinda, it was difficult to tell exactly what happened, but she was no longer there, and she had left in a stream. And though it, you had conquered the enemy, at least for the present, it didn't necessarily feel that way, as the town had erupted in cheers and quickly taking care of you guys as much as possible. Apologies were abound. The whole town felt so apologetic for the way that they had treated you when you first entered. Um, so they took care of you guys. They made sure that you had steeds. They made sure that you had house and roof over your head. Um, they gave you whatever you needed to continue your journey westward. You guys wanted to continue, press your way towards the Sword Coast to try to get answers and also to follow this very interesting trail left behind from a letter that you guys had been slowly decoding throughout your journey. Unsure of what may lie ahead, you made your way across these lands and were able to make, make it through these desert kind of mirages and small towns along the way and came to the shores of Waterdeep. It's a pretty rambunctious town. There's a lot that goes on here. Uh, seedy but beautiful, technological yet also ancient. There's the streets are always full of horses and carriages and lamps that are ever glowing and it's chaos. There's hundreds and thousands of people everywhere. It's, it's packed, it's dense, and there's a lot of commotion. However, this is at least a place that you guys know that you could recharge, get information, meet people who could help you, especially since it seems like there's a lot more at play here than just what you guys are currently understanding. So, you have been in Waterdeep for almost six months now. 
just trying to get a roof over your head, trying to play some music to get by and scrape by. Money is not necessarily a problem, thankfully. You guys all have different assets and skills that you've been able to use that you can describe to me how you have been using them. But it's also been a great place for not just worldly, but also personal journey. So let's begin there. I would love to know over, over the course of these last six months of hiatus, <laughs> what you guys have been doing with your characters after that very difficult final battle last season in Waterdeep. So I would love to start, with, how about with Rowan? Can you describe to me a little bit of uh, what it was like to walk into Waterdeep as well as maybe what you've been up to? Oh, Waterdeep stinks awfully. It's so nauseous. Um, I've been spending most of my time in the library. I've been learning everything I can about liches. And I've been sleeping in a lovely little tree outside of town because it's just a bit too overwhelming for me quite to feel comfortable in Waterdeep yet. Um, there I've befriended a flying squirrel named Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Hopkins he is his name. He lives in the front pocket. And he likes to scuttle up every now and then you might see him poke out from behind my head. Uh, he keeps me company in the library while I do research. And uh, he also delivers messages for me to the other girls who you all know him as well. Mm. Mr. Hopkins. Mr. Hopkins. Mm. Not Anthony though. <laughs> Different Not, Hopkins. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, and I've been very busy learning about potions that I've acquired. Uh, I'd like, <laughs> side note to DM, I'd like to say at some point during my time in Waterdeep, I've done an ID check on Sid Silence, Potion of Greater Healing and Powerful Plight. I will say that during your six months here, it hasn't been necessarily easy for you because it is, there's not much of a forest anywhere nearby here. There are some mountains nearby that you've been able to retreat to, the, though some are more uh, questionable than others. You've been drawn towards mountainside and have been able to find one of the one or two of the trees there to be, be, be closer to. Um, from there, you had kind of looked through the dock ward and the castle ward and had met some people in the castle ward who though didn't want to give you time of day, seeing that you were a forest gnome in a city. Um, <laughs> uh, was it called Big Fish Small Pond? It was the reverse of that. Um, uh, but after some relentless begging on the street corners, some of them had given you time of day and had brought you into their scroll enterprises and had done some identify spells on them. So okay. I will say you know both of those. Also, Oh, that's right. You've so lost your hand. So we did a one-off show for Comic-Con, and I don't know how many of you guys saw that, but it might be like this. This might... What, where are we at in relation to that? Oh. So, a lot of what had occurred, it's very odd because it was almost like a dream state. Two things that you guys had undergone, it was, it was almost as if they happened or didn't happen. However, mm. you still did wake up without, without a hand. hand. Um... So you are probably not just trying to get identify on those, but also trying to figure out how to get, get your hand hat. back. Um, <laughs> things of that sort, you would have to go to temples with. And we'll put a pause on that, because I have known that you were probably working with some other people of the party, including Fauna mm -hmm. and uh, maybe even Moira, to try to get your hand regenerated. But it's okay now, because I have Mr. Hopkins. <laughs> he is your extra hand. And actually, can I have you roll a uh, history check just to see how much information you had gathered on liches? Oh. Um, 11. Oh, it's been a long six months. Um, most books, uh, this, there's not really a known library that you've been able to track down, and the biggest one is actually guarded. It's in Blackstaff Tower, which you guys have all seen. It's this ginormous tower for very elite spellcasters. It's, it's a very prestigious area of the Castle Ward, and for the most part, the Castle Ward is a pretty high affluent area. Um, you guys also have been able to walk through other areas of Waterdeep, but haven't had the best experiences in them, especially in the areas towards the seaside. Um, so you've been trying to keep in this neighborhood, uh, but you did be, uh, you did befriend, um, a local bookstore owner. Um, it is called, let me pull this up. It is called Follows, uh, Follows Lead. 
And oh, so, sweet. yes, and it's by a young, young girl named Follow, um, who is just much like Edna. So Edna, so Edna's been trying to get into Blackstaff Tower nonstop, but Edna's often at Follow's lead. And the two of you, the two of them are like chattering to each other in the same language. So every time you walk in, it's like speaking to twins. <laughs> Great. Okay, Follow and Edna. Mm -hmm. uh, Follow and you, as well as Edna trying to help when she had the time of day, because she's just so busy poking her nose and other things. She has been trying to study how to get regeneration on your arm too, I'll say, along with Fauna. Um, what type of creature is Follow? Oh, just a human human uh, woman, probably about 16 to 17. She's young for opening a bookstore of her arm, especially in the castle ward. Gotta admire entrepreneurial spirit though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and she's not too far away. There's two places right now that you guys have been kind of, I'll say that you guys had been sleeping and staying at the yawning portal as much as possible. However, it's gotten so busy and crowded and it's the best known mm -hmm. inn in all of Waterdeep that you guys have actually been pushed out of it because you're not as well known in this land, um, oh. unfortunately. And so it led to Kendra, though. Excuse oh, I have excuse a lovely treehouse. I'm telling you, come sleep with me. Is that what you were Is banging it? on the door as they were kicking you out? <laughs> Dernan well, did not want you in there. <laughs> Is it a tree house or is it a tree <coughs> that you just happen to be sleeping? Probably a tree. It's more like a tree hammock loft. Oh. Quite lofty. Very rustic. I think I'm too big for your tree. <laughs> I can It's very rustic. You can sleep at the bottom. That's what I'm doing. By the roots. Yes. I and sleep at different place every night. <laughs> I guess you could just set a camp <laughs> by everyone's tree. I'll hide a place. All right. Um, <laughs> I will say it didn't take too long because there's other inns on the street. There were four other inns that you guys could have entered and if you wanted to go as a party or if not, that's up to you, but we'll visit that maybe in a moment and see what that looked like because I think I would like to start right from there to see what it looks like when you guys all get kicked out on the street. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, with a tw uh, an 11 on your, your lich roll, it's difficult. Um, rich, bitch, rich. You didn't <laughs> learn a lot that you were expecting. There's not a lot of books on liches. This is a very ancient, kind of strange process, it seems. Um, there's some very small scribbles on side notes. You can actually get a lot of these books, which have been used books. Um, she just gathers anything she can and sells it here. Um, but you're able to gather that in order to become a lich, you have to be very powerful ahead of time. And you then have to use your body and your soul in a way that you destroy it and then can resurrect it. And you usually, it's something called a phylactery that you place your soul into. That's about all you can understand and get. You don't know what a phylactery looks like or what it could be. You don't understand what the abilities of a lich are, but you just, you get the very basic, basic information down, which is actually pretty difficult to find all things considered. But after six months of relentless study, you do learn that. So to recap, I learned that in order to become a lich, one must already be very powerful, and you cannot be a lich without a phylactery. All right. <laughs> okay, Drieshka, what have you been up to? Well, I've been in a state of um, grief, dealing, oh. you know, the five stages. Uh, my, my first love, per first person I said I love you to, has, has died in a very tragic way. Uh, Walton, Valindra, incinerated? No. Disintegrated. Disintegrated. Uh, I smile now because I feel awkward because it's painful. Um, so I've been, you know, doing my five stages, which is drinking, uh, adult playtime, we'll call it. Um, uh, drink, did I say drinking? Okay, again. Uh, sleeping. Um, and I'm actually trying to find a way to put his ashes into uh, my totem. I'm making a new one, uh, a bear for my spirit um, totem and, and I'm going to wear it. And I'm being very picky because I am having issues. Uh, there are no, there's no therapy in uh, water deep, uh, at least none that I like. So I've been, you know, playing music with uh, my girl 
Relief and uh, doing a lot of bar sessions with anyone that wanted to join, mostly her. A little green magic plant with um, this one over here, Rowan. And a little herbalism kit. To help. Well, it's a little herbalism try. kit. And I'm just kind of going through it. I thought that it, you know my way would be to have adult playtime, and then just I went to do that, and then it did not feel right because it's not well, you know, lots of problems. Yeah, so just, I would say I'm, an, I'm, in, I'm just a wandering dragon. dragon barbarian. You definitely are a familiar face at about 25 different bars in Waterdeep, and oh. there's like a hundred, but like you've hit a quarter of them, and like going for all. Yes. You're, you're going for all of yes. the bars in Waterdeep. Okay. So, hard. <laughs> so you've been to the Banshee at Bay mm. and the Dancers Inn. Dancers and the Inn, very nice. Golden Harp Inn and the Sated Seder. The like, Sated Seder. <laughs> yeah. What kind of, some of, I know some people in the Sated Seder. <laughs> so, so I'll also say you're most, you met, you, even if you spend all day, day drinking, yes. um, you often end as well at the Yawning Portal because that is like, by far some of the best beer you can get mm. there's a lot of people to witness and see and it's a fun place to people watch Some, sometimes people get in fights you've even heard that things come out of the portal in the center so you've been like looking for a fight too like I feel like oh, yeah. you know if you love raging and you're not dealing with therapy well especially when I drink yeah my accent gets stronger when I drink and then you know and then the two of us <laughs> together yeah. yeah but you haven't had a brawl in almost six months like you've don't have the energy. Yeah, it's it's hard for a barbarian. It's almost like you've lost a little bit of that fighter in you. Have yeah, you? <laughs> lost a part of me. So <coughs> it's hard for me to admit I love, but you know, I smile and say it's okay. Can I have you roll? At, oh. I want two things. Can yeah. I have an, a Constitution saving throw, okay. as well as a? I think I would love for you to make an investigation check, please. That sucks. That was a five. For a constitution? Yeah. But then, you know, do I use my uh, so eight? <laughs> eight? Okay. Um, you I'm telling you've you, it's, gotten it's a to a hill. point that you... I don't like this dice. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, Janishka, I'm going to nice say day. that for the next week or two, I'm going to say that you're borderline having a drink, drinking problem. Oh, yes. So you might need too. to always have alcohol on you. In yeah. order to feel better right now. Okay, um, no problem. So you might be, uh, and I'll, I'm going to say that maybe a couple of you have noticed this, primarily if anybody's been drinking with her a lot at the bar. I'm going to say Lilith. You probably caught her passed out once a week. <laughs> yes. This is... I usually have to round up a couple of the men in the, in the area to bring her back home. To oh, because Rowan's I'm big. Tree. Yeah, but everyone loves you. Oh, no one's, like, no one's kicked you out. Like Life you're, the party. you're the yeah. life of the party. It's just Janiska's working through some stuff. She's working through a lot, yes. And then what was your investigation check? Well, let's say it was, <laughs> we'll say it was six. <laughs> was okay. It was six or nine. It's a anything? six. Oh, and I, investigation. Um, bum, 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 bum. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's very fun being me oh, right now. Oh boy. Uh, what, so six. Yeah. Okay. So, unfortunately, because you've been so busy drinking playtime, drinking, like sleeping, one, and investigating for a place to put Walton's poor ashes, um, the other four things prior have taken precedence. So, um, every time you try to find a place to bury him or put his ashes in, you just can't find yourself or make yourself go. It's like... It's not ready. No, you're just not ready yet. And so, unfortunately, you still are carrying his ashes and still it. trying to find a, an appropriate place. And I think that... With all things considered, you're also just not in the right headspace to do it yet. Yeah. So it's been a hard six months for you. All right, Lala. Well, um, aside from helping, trying to help grieving Dranishka as much as I can, um, and sending animal messages back and <laughs> forth with Mr. Hopkins, um, because once I leveled up, I gained Animal Messenger. <laughs> just so you know. I have two. Does that mean <gasps> so many pets. you become so many pets. an animal messenger or no, you have I can, one? No, I can send messages Through animals. via animals. So they're like, speak with my little voice. I love it. Um, but I've also been uh, training almost obsessively a little bit. Training? Yes, getting um, my archery as honed as possible, um, trying to find, because I did not like the fact that we don't know if... 
Melindra is around or not. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be prepared. So just yep. a lot of just practicing and mm -hmm. just trying to get into the best tip-top shape, almost as if you're level seven. Um, almost. <laughs> almost as if things have gotten better in archery. So yeah. have you? where have you been practicing? I'm curious. There's a lot of different wards in Waterdeep. Mm -hmm. There's the sea ward, the field, north, castle ward, trade ward, dock ward. Like, there's so many different places, but they all have different flavors to them. I'm curious, what have you been shooting at for practice? Trees in the forest with Rowan. <laughs> So you've gone to the non-existent forest by the mountainside yes. in attempt. So you also have not been spending time in the city. A little bit. I'll go into the city at night and uh, maybe have a beverage. Yes. But not yeah. not Dranishka beverages. But then I could have a little one. Like if you I'll have like, yeah, I'll have like a Shirley Temple. No, I'll have like a small a thimble. thimble. But I won't. I won't be like. Pints, pints. Because <laughs> I'm also too small for a drown. pint. I would, I'd say, drown pint. Yes. I would say I would like for you then to make a constitution saving throw. Oh dear. Um, if you're also drinking. As well as, let's, let's just let's make it a general see. dexterity. Just a small amount of drinking. Yeah, and a general dexterity saving throw too. That's okay. It's all poisoned. Okay, oh, well, no. for con. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> I... <laughs> That's bad. Right. Eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, so, was it a con saving throw or? Uh, con saving throw. Oh, also an eight. <laughs> <laughs> an eight. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Trying to hold your hold your drink. Uh, next to uh, next to the master of drinking over here, it's been a yeah, little so more difficult than Lala's expecting. Yeah. So, um, can I please have you make that dex, uh, general deck saving throw? Um, and I'm actually going to have you do it with disadvantage if you made that low of a con. <gasps> That's upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, 17. Okay. Oh, wait, it would be 17 uh, dex saving throw? Okay, well, it doesn't really matter anyway, because my lowest one was a 10. Okay, I including your modifiers? Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, so, while you've been drinking, uh, and trinishka has been, like, crying and just, like, <laughs> dealing with this, you haven't been able to get... Like, her tears are the size, almost, of your body. <laughs> she's, you know, she's a bear totem, oh, yeah. barbarian, yeah. you're a tiny little pixie. So, you've been nice. getting drunk and constantly getting hit with her tears, like, like a... So, I'm just damp. <laughs> yeah, just all the time. Damp. And, <laughs> and thankfully, it hasn't hindered any of your skill reflexes during mm -hmm. the day, but every time at night, it's... Now you're kind of, you know, you're ready for what Dronishka's bringing. And you're not, unfortunately, you're trying to help, but... She's she's dealing with a lot. So, uh, Lala, you're, I'm not gonna say that you've been a uh, you've been the co uh, the coolest person at the bar, per se. <laughs> Why is this pixie all wet, stuck to the table? I What's wrong I, with this teddy Barbie doll? This is Why how you find her out. Let me. Uh, and oh, then just oh, while well, you that. shake me, all of my <laughs> pixie <laughs> dust just. <laughs> I love it, and then it's just sparkle water. It's just I flying off of my water. body. I I messed up. I had more. Uh, I had more constitution. Oh, you did. Yes, it was three more points. So it was like uh, eleven. Eleven. Okay. Same All right. thing. So, a little less a drunk. A little less drunk, sure. but still, still barely holding it together. I'm yeah. still gonna say that you're gonna have to have some, some alcohol on you to get by, and if. You don't have alcohol, let's see what happens, kind of thing. Um, I'm going to need a special flask. One but, for Walton, one for James. Lala, I'll also say trading wise, um, I would like for you to make, let's just make this a general persuasion check <coughs> to try to see how good of a deal you've gotten if you've been trying to trade items or anything like that. Oh, training. Oh, training. I, but I also training. Want, but I also went better. Like, I've been looking for good, like maybe like a new longbow or like new short swords okay new, i want something new i've got gold and i'm willing to buy some nice things with it <laughs> and got gold i'm not afraid to spend it it's true um so let's have that be an investigation check then okay same roll yes okay well uh 12 okay um the whole city right now is just there's so much trade going on and so many places are still sold out and because you've been spending so much time both at bars and in the forest, you haven't really cozied up to a lot of people and shop sellers. Well, in that case, I'm going to try to steal something. Oh, okay. Oh, um, oh, oh. I'm going to say because everything is so sold out, oh, it would I almost be gone. like you'd have, you tried. You've tried to look for places to even steal, Lala. And like, that's not even present. You would have to probably steal it off the back of somebody walking around town. Um, people are like, 
like walking around in droves. There's a lot of adventuring parties here. It's, it's definitely something you could try to do down the line, but I'll say that you're keeping your eye out for okay. it. Okay, I'm yeah? gonna look, keep my eye out for something really nice and shiny <laughs> that I can't <laughs> not steal. <laughs> um, great, so Moira, what have you been up to the last six months? Um, I think three major things. Uh, obviously spending a lot of time in the temple trying to talk with my god, or rather talk at, yell at, and, and plead with uh, Helm for any kind of guidance, especially considering the vision that we had of all of my friends killing me. Uh, very disturbing. Um, I'd also like to, while in the temple, spend quite a bit of time either playing dragon chess and, and honing my skills at that, because okay. I just want to spend time doing something simple. Uh, also training with some of the other paladins and, and Templars so that though we aren't in, in battle constantly now, I, I, I'm still in, in fighting form to, to protect my friends. And maybe also spend some gold and get some good lightweight wood and try and whittle a hand for Rowan so that she can maybe put a glove on it and just kind of, you know, Luke Skywalker it. Whittle a hand. <laughs> I will she say, is. because of your status, even just walking around, people recognize you, especially in the Castle Ward, which is often uh, people of lower classes are automatically sniffed out and looked down upon. However, you are actually not given a second glance, which is a good thing. It's better to almost not have to be stared and gawked mm -hmm. at here. Um, but it has kept you a little bit more on guard, so you have kind of made um, Helm's Hall in the South Ward your second home, um, which is not too far away from uh, the Castle Ward, just through the trade area. Um, but as you have been spending time in Helm's Hall, um, you had also uh, been able to play and set up some of the dragon chests there. There was one in the dusty back covers, and you've become good friends with the aged paladin of Helm who oversees this area here named Kibber Edric. Mm -hmm. And he oversees this, and he's kind of an elderly man. He's, he's up there, but he loves playing dragon chess. He's all about it. Is so he better than me? Well, we're going to find out. Can I have oh both of us? Uh, we're both going to make an intelligence roll to oh see what we Listen, I'm not too smart. I'm really <laughs> not. Um, no, I'm not. This is going to be bad. Oh, nine. Well, he rolled a natural one. Um, so. I am proficient in dragon chess. Oh, then you get uh, to add your proficiency bonus Why onto I that check. picked it. Okay, 12. 12, okay. So he's so old that he takes forever to make a move. Like a solid 20-minute study year of every move he makes. And that gives you an opportunity to see. And his eyes also move in the direction that he's like looking to go in. So you're able to figure out all of his plays. And for even with your 12, you want a better challenger. Like, he's so sweet, and you're definitely becoming good friends with him as he's kind of like, I move it to this one. <laughs> and he's like... <laughs> grandpa. <laughs> yeah, it's Grandpa, grandpa, grandpa Chips Paul. player. Um, but though he, you know, he's got a good heart, heart of gold, he allows you in here to pray every day. It's a very modest um, temple, mm -hmm. uh, all things considered. There's so many temples here that you were expecting a bit more of a grander one. Then I'm going to dump one um, platinum piece into, into the, it. Yeah. Oh wow! Well, you probably did that the moment you walked in and met yes, him. Yes. Uh, upon which That's he exactly he so. thanked you he thanked you profusely, especially since it seemed like the temple wasn't getting a lot of donations. Mm -hmm. And he also said that he would <coughs> willingly play with you anytime. Uh, Dragon chess. Um, you also catch that there's an orphanage that's running here right now um, oh. that oversees uh, quite a few children. It's about 30 children. So it's a lot of people who are kind of in the back and I'm taking give care of these a, kids. A, a, a platinum to the temple and five gold to the orphanage specifically. Oh, great. Um, so one gold, uh, one platinum to the temple and <clears throat> you, and how much gold? Five. Five. Five gold. Well, that alone, the kids, you know, he, Kibber just constantly tells the kids to praise you every time you walk in. And the no. kids hug you and smile oh and shower you with love when they are given opportunities for recess and things of that sort. <laughs> there is one child who is actually really good at dragon chess. Oh. Who has, like, tried to play with you a couple times, but then Kibber always steps in and, like, challenges you. Um, I will say at one point, um, this young boy, uh, he's no older than eight, um... Uh, his name is B uh, Barry. 
Barry. It's very simple. Uh, he likes to call himself Barry. You don't think that's his real name? Uh-huh. You, you definitely don't think that's his real name? But you... He said that he would... I'll say that he said he would give you his real name if you actually play chess with him and you beat him. So let's have a second intelligence check oh God. Um, on both of us. Child so. is going to be better than me. Child is. Let's see. <laughs> Ten. And I just rolled a natural 20. I rolled a natural oh 1 my God. and a natural 20. The, I think the Child first ones of the season. better than me. Um, oh, he destroys <gasps> you within the first minute. And he's like, guess you're not going to know my name. Respect and he just, your elders. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I'll beat you next Will time. you play again with of me sometime? Course. And so whenever you can sneak one, when uh, Kibber goes away for lunches or meals to take care of the orphanage, he also sneaks out a berry and plays with you as well. Um, so uh, you bonded with Barry. You know Kibber pretty well. I also would like you to make a religion check just to see, as you have been praying to Helm, if you can get kind of guided in any sort of way. You know, it's funny. I have a minus one in religion. I'm a very bad paladin. <laughs> Thirteen. Yeah. I'm not super duty um, unfortunately, as you've been praying relentlessly to Helm, though you're often answered with serenity and calmness, you're not really getting the response you want, mm-hmm. which is... A direct answer. What did that mean? What was this vision? And it seems like there's almost, um, from what you can gather, a. It's almost like Helm didn't even recognize that you're asking about this. Almost as if it's not even plausible, and you feel like you're constantly hitting a wall every time you're talking to Helm, um, which is answered in the sensations and sounds and um, just general aura. So the, the helm has not come out and spoken to you verbally yet. Mm-hmm. Um, even with six months of prayer and study, that's been frustrating. Yeah. The one thing you do know, though, is that, and you've discovered this talking to Kibber and everybody else in the temple, is that um, not too far north of here, there's an, there's an actual area of the world that is just dedicated to Helm. It's called Helm's Hold. It's huge. It's south of Neverwinter, oh. which is not too far away from Waterdeep. Mm-hmm. It's probably a solid 10-day travel. Um, but if you ever were curious or wanted more, it seems that Kibber has pointed you in that direction um, and also drooled it out every time you've asked. And he's repeated this 15 times. This is why you... Good night. Um, this is why you've recognized this at this point. You're like, okay, I know about Helm's Hold. Thanks, Kibber. Like, don't need to draw on anymore. Yeah. Um, that has been your journey so far, Moira. Pretty confined to one location. Yep. All right. And Lilith. Well, I was very upset when the rest of my team told me that we were going to be settling down in one place. Uh, I get very anxious when I have to be in one place for too long. I prefer to be always on the move. I've been on the run since I was a little kid, so that's where I feel at my best. So it's been an adjustment period. I've become somewhat of a nocturnist, getting up around four in the afternoon and then (coughs) going to sleep around seven in the morning. Mm, Wow. Um, (laughs) I can relate. (laughs) I've uh, I've joined the local theater. (laughs) (laughs) Of course you have, darling. I love your performances. The Tondras Theater. The Tondras, love it. And uh, so I've been making a little bit of change that way, and then also I've been teaching music to some of the children oh, wow. in, in the village. Um, I have a few lovers that I've acquired since our our stay. Um, that's, that's the one thing that I am glad about settling into one place for, is that I get to kind of see my lovers on a regular basis. Uh, one of them, named Caro, has been teaching me how to teleport, and uh, so I've been practicing my teleportation skills. Great. And at night, I like to walk <coughs> to the edge of town and kind of scope out the forest and just be in nature. So it seems like quite a few of you guys are trying to stick nearby nature. Um, I will say that if you've been teaching to music to children... Um, No doubt you've been reaching out to different orphanages, and so you actually occasionally 
have to unfortunately walk into, through a temple into the orphanage in the back, and you do pass by Moira occasionally. Yes. Um, but temple of prayer, and you're just like, oh gosh. And it's always late at night that Lilith walks in, always past bedtime hours. Um, but the kids are very excited to learn your lessons, usually right after dinner time or so. Um, let's have you roll a performance check to see uh, how you've been treating, uh, training, training and treating these kids. <laughs> 24. 24. Wow. You you think Moy you think these orphans love Moira. <laughs> oh no. The moment that Lilith walks in, it's like a party and they all scream and they shout and like enjoy. Um, they all pull you in the back and they, they you sit around and you teach them how to play. They they don't have enough money um, to buy extra in instruments. Um, I will say, however, thanks to Moira's donation, they were able to get a very few handmade kind of clunky um, uh, uh, instruments at their disposal to learn, and you've actually taught about a quarter of them music, a quarter of them singing, and uh, they're starting a little orphan band to help. <laughs> uh, what would you, they wanted to, they would ask you for the name of it to bestow it upon you. Can you think of any fun Lilith inspired name that you would want these kids to name their band? <laughs> <laughs> Make it appropriate, please. Uh, think of the children. <laughs> think of the children. Their band is called the Chipmunks. <laughs> <laughs> but no album. The Chipmunks. Yeah. Um, they are rather squirrely in their um, in their voices. They're very high pitched. Um, I'm not certain they've ever met Mr. Hopkins, but mm -hmm. no doubt that these. Not yet. These kids, the chipmunks versus the squirrel, <laughs> could be a great battle, battle of the bands one day in Waterdeep. Um, <laughs> but um, they're just, they're enamored with you in, in the best sort of way. And, and uh, several of them seem to be inspired by that. Um, can I also have you roll, just because of how different this lifestyle is and with your new kind of nocturnal setting, could I have you roll also a constitution saving throw just to see if you've been able to adjust? Mm. been hard on you this yes, adjustment yes. to night it's a familiar setting because back at home it's almost ever night it's almost always night um so you're trying to almost feel like this place is home again but home doesn't necessarily have the best memories so you're often riddled with um, nightmares at night um very vivid nightmares a lot of memories and ever since you had that very odd flashback um to once what was once your life, I think that you've been struggling with this idea of standing still. And so you've just been channeling that into your music as much as possible. Yes, that sounds correct. <laughs> yeah. um, Moira, I had also forgotten that you asked to whittle a oh, hand for, uh, for Rowan. So can I please have you roll a dexterity check? I don't want to forget that. <laughs> I'm going to try since. That's a beautiful add hand. Add some leaves into the side and like <laughs> make articulated joints. I mean, you can't really do anything. Moira, do you have any experience whittling? Maybe. I will Actually, say that you've been right. waiting so long in between these chess matches for him to make a dang move that you just have been whittling wood <laughs> in practice. Like, and like, like Lilith will walk in and just like, hey, as you're like whittling away on wood. Um, actually, you spend so much time at the hold, uh, excuse me, at the hall that. Uh, you haven't been able to go to the forest to get any good wood, but Lala, Rowan, and Lilith all have been going to the forest when they can. So they've been bringing you back all this wood um, that you've been whittling away, and it dawned on you to make a hand for Rowan at one point, upon which I'll say that let's actually have the two of you guys add fun little adornments to it too. So like, I'll say that Moira <laughs> just started finishing the hand. I, and I have a magnifying glass. She can put it on the end. It's just Pop it right into the hand. So it's just like, <laughs> it's like a magnifying so, glass. I also so, have a crowbar. Pop it if you'd rather have a crowbar. Okay, no. Can, so, they, can they like can you press oh, a button and like pop out? Are we that scientific? What are we can Oh, you know this? what? Okay, let's see. I'm gonna say Moira. You had oh, just wow, finished. Oh wow, that's worth fifty gold pieces. Oh, well, like, I'm not giving that. Maybe I don't know. Because, <laughs> it, was natural, because it was a natural twenty, um, I will say that. Uh, and also, you guys have all been trying to help Rowan with this gift, this like secret gift. 
um, that uh, the two of you guys had been um, trying to get add a little flair of your own into it. So with that natural 20, I will say that you were able to add an area where the magnifying glass does come out. Okay. So you were you have a little <laughs> like contraction. Like an inspector gadget it? Yeah, like what? an inspector gadget. And they're growing hands. Oh, my God. Awesome. Um, so you have a little wooden hand adorned so with flowers thing. made by Moira Yay. with a magnifying glass. I have some precious gems. Thank you. Are we making the gauntlet? Oh. Oh, boom, boom, uh, boom, boom. Well, I'm not going to give them all up. But I am willing to put an like emerald, one, one nice one yeah, a nice one. emerald, like right on the back. Guys, <laughs> keep it hidden. Uh, don't get your hands stolen. Yeah, you. don't get. Did I help at all? <laughs> Trinishka, I'm so sorry, but no. no. The day that they were making the hand, you you haven't been spending, I'm going to say that you're one with your unsavory lovers. Mm. Um, uh, Billy Bo. Billy Bo. Billy Bo. Billy Bo. Billy Bo. Okay. Like B-E-A-U. Billy Bo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll carve in it with my great axe later. It would be great. Just like a big chop off a finger right under Trinishka. <laughs> Oh, right, yeah. All right, you guys, uh, we're just going to take, as you guys are handing off the hand over to Rowan, uh, we're going to take a break right there, and we'll see you guys in just a moment. Stay tuned. back thank you so much for working with our technical issues we appreciate you guys so much uh so we appreciate you so much that we're gonna do a giveaway yay, yay! exclamation mark <laughs> raffle we're gonna pull it right now for the player's handbook um it's not this one this one's my own personal one but uh you're gonna get one sent to you next week don't forget it's international and have Are we, we pulled it no have oh, we pulled oh, the, just the winner do we have a winner <laughs> Winner, winner, chicken. Stand by. Winner. winner? Stand by. And while we do, Lily, play us some tunes. Uh -huh. Play us a tune. There's already music playing. Oh, there's already music. Do we have, have it? Music. Do we I have it? Not yet. Player's handbook? In the meantime. I will sing to you. Single player. Oh, single player, congratulations. Yay! Single player. Are you in check? Because you got to be here to win it. What an appropriate name for the player's handbook. Oh. Hopefully you'll be a multiplayer with a single player. <laughs> but oh. it's exciting. Do the mana white hands. We have, oh yeah, Vanna White. Um, oh. <laughs> you know, beautiful Vanna White music. I'm still, um, still learning the ukulele. Perfect, I loved it. Um, it's a new instrument. Yeah, someone copied that. Um, but uh, we also have a secondary raffle. That wasn't the only one. Whoa, what? Surprise, surprise. Amazing. Um, we have a second one. We have, uh, we're gonna be giving away the uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist book, which is awesome and amazing, which I don't have a copy of. Oh, it seems like single player isn't present in chat. Oh, oh no. You know what? Uh -oh. I did mention you have some present in chat. Got to get your, present. To get you your uh, around. player's handbook. So let's draw once more to see who's Drawing. present in chat. Second person. <laughs> Why would she pose a I second person? I close the page. So it's not me. I will tell you a story. We're waiting tell for the other story. poll. Yeah, tell us the story. Well, I have just recently remembered that uh, Mr. Hopkins is very cute to me. <laughs> I, I think I have things for small creatures, little, you know, fauna, Wait. Walton. What kind of things, Trinisha? Well, no, I mean, like, he's very cute. Like, I was crying like a day, oh, okay. and, and she, okay. she, like she you know, Rowan let me hold him, and I said, I don't want him, and then I said, no, so and then very, very I held cute. him, and I got softer in my heart. Has, and oh, now she, she likes to nuzzle in her bosoms. And he nuzzles, because I, I got the bosoms. And he nuzzles in my dragon bosoms. <laughs> and sometimes he makes me happy. <laughs> That's one of my things helping me is her. Mr. Hopkins. Well, Always uh, snap. Your emotional, snap for your that, emotional yeah. support squirrel. Yeah, emotional support <laughs> squirrel. Your emotional Therapy support squirrel. squirrel. Oh, and, yeah. But emotional support squirrel. But sometimes. Squirrel. He's very suspicious about this for here. It's you know, not that was real. Me. I asked him for oh. the new one. Actually, in the, this world, in that world, in, in this world, mm -hmm. it is real because it's an animal that I use every part, you know, because that's how we do. We, we hunt yes. and then we, we use all the parts like yes. native... People. Mm -hmm. Barbarian. I'm a barbarian, all right? 
I use all the parts. <laughs> you use all so the at parts. least you've had a, an animal to kind of even if the even if the uh, emotional <laughs> support squirrel E S S. I can get on dragon planes with them. Even though the emotional support otherwise is water. Yeah, but it's not my. I just thumb that. E S F S. I'm like anti anti Brani. Myers Briggs. Granishka's anti. What's your Myers Briggs? E S F S. Wait. Emotional support flying squirrel. Oh. That's my Myers Briggs. E S F S. I am the emotional support flying squirrel. Did you show a picture of Mr. Hopkins? <laughs> she has a picture. Ooh, we have a new winner. Oh. We have a new winner. Wait, are we? We're going, right? We're. We're good. Yes. We good. We chill. We cool. Is it happening? Yeah. Yes. Yes. We are on. Maybe. We are yeah. recording. Maybe. No. Yes. 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 We are on. Mm -hmm. Well, night razor. Whoa! Night razor. Night razor. Night razor. Night razor. Like oh, night razor. Razor. You night get razor. the player's handbook. A very great name too for a player's handbook. Very cool. I very like cool name. Night razor. Congratulations! We have another yes. we have another giveaway at the end of uh, the second uh, break. So stay tuned again. It's Water Deep uh, Water Deep Dragon Heist, uh, the new module that just got published. Like I think it's September eighteenth. So and it's really fun, and we got to play parts of it. So yeah. the stream. So stay tuned. Don't forget it's exclamation mark raffle, and it is international and will be shipped to you next week. Just make sure you whisper you know, direct message the D and D, uh, and make sure to be present in chat when we draw. Stay Otherwise, here, free book. Come you on. You don't get it. Come on. We pick someone else. We're entertaining. Come on. Love Stay us. tuned. Haha, <laughs> which is a fun transition into Lilith playing music. Uh, I do. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> so we can pick up from there. I think that we're good to go, right? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's happy. We have our winners. We continue. So let's. Did you want to set the now? scene? No, I love it. Okay, it's perfect. Go. So you guys have been doing all these different things in Waterdeep the past six months, uh, rather going to Helm's Hall or finding a forest nearby and befriending a small squirrel, um, or drowning some sorrows away in a very large mug. Bigger than this. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are actually doing the thing that you've kind of come to know and love, which is about once, once a week, maybe twice a week, you all get together. Not just sleeping in the forest or sleeping in Yawning Portal and one of the rooms that you guys have rented out, but the Yawning Portal is not just a place to sleep. It's a place to see lively characters and meet interesting folk and maybe to get yourselves into a little bit of trouble or a little bit of fun, whatever it might be. Both. Um, however, as you guys are all joining along in the revelry at your normal table in the spot in the left-hand corner, Drunishka once more falls her whole face Kerplunk oh. into the table, and Durnan walks over. Should I do this? The bar owner. Oh, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm not going to do the bar. I'll just put my hand down. Boom. Okay. I'm and put the I start playing really loud to try to wake her up. <laughs> just screaming. What do you want? And he comes over, and you've done this too many times, and it is to the point where you guys. We're on the last warning, the last leg, and you all get yelled at. He grabs you by your Whoa, collar, buddy. lifts you up. All the other guards in there How are big standing is he up. Me he's, up. Pretty, he's, he's about you're a little bit smaller than you, okay. but he's able to lift you up, and he, he has to like guide you because you're very drunk out. Mm. He doesn't like pick you up and throw you. He just pushes you on your back, and throws you out and slams the door behind you. And you see the bodyguard step right in front, the guy who allows people in and out of the awning portal, and he just steps right in front of it and crosses his arms. And he just goes, <clears throat> The Mwerins of Green One will remember this. One of you was supposed to make sure that she was drinking water with every drink. I can't control her. Don't look at me. Do you think that she Lizzie. respects me based on my size? Do you think that any one of us could actually stop her if she had something in mind? I tried. I... Even Mr. Hawkins was nudging at the glass. Mr. Hawkins. She wouldn't take. She loves That's all right, y'all. Come five? stay in my treehouse. Well, now I think I've lost my job here. So. You worked here? We can find why was my? Uh, why did I pay for my booze? Because you drink too much. You would have drunk them dry. Oh. Okay. I'm not going to support your unhealthy habits. What? She just drinks with me every day. I said with me. I mean, I'm not going to financially support your drinking habits. But you support me when, when. When they have lovers. I can't control what you do, okay? She finds me people to play with. Oh, God. 
Uh, Dranushka is already kind of her eyes are wandering around as she had just oh. been thrown out. And you see not too far away definitely one of your lovers who, who's eagerly looking at you. And, like, he's a, he's a tiny so. little guy. He's a human male, probably about, I don't know, I'd say early 20s, maybe mid-20s. Um, oh. uh, you yeah, like him small, don't you? <laughs> Do you just like to push him around? I think just because, well, tonight I'm trying to be... Okay. Oh. 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 You know what? As someone who has lost their lover, my true love, well, I mean, one of, um, you can have to talk about one true love. Absolutely, you can have more than one true love. Am I crying? You can, no, listen, hey, you, calm down, you're fine. Okay. If you talk about it, that's how you get over it. I don't want to. The, the bodyguard is just standing there and, like, rolling his eyes. Don't you do you, that. Especially because we had fun I last week. You. Don't you forget it. In fact, can we walk away from here? Yeah, let's, 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 yeah, let's move let's away move. from... I don't like this. Hofstetler. What's your name? Hofstetler. Welp. Loves me. Piss okay. This Peon! way. This way. Okay. Yeah. But my guy. Human. What's his name? Steve. Steve. <laughs> Steve. Steve. Steve the human. Steve. Do you want to call you Steve? You, you move very fast. <laughs> well, Steve Steve had been looking at you across the way. You actually don't know if that's his name. Um, <laughs> I don't. And, and, and he anything. just he's just kind of like, he looks around like when you shout Steve, and he's like, Steve. And he's, he's trying to run to you, but you guys all kind of push her away off to the side as he's yeah. trying to come up to you. But you see like three Steves at once almost. It's very confusing. I like triplets. <laughs> <laughs> Child, no, she's going to wreck you. I, she will destroy but, you. Exactly. But she Break bought me helmets. a drink. Have she bought me a she will dragon. Dragon. Child, My horns are getting very... Destroy you. Vib and not vibrating. in a good way. It will be painful. I keep snorting a fire. And it's really... <laughs> it's not very attractive. <laughs> Can I have you make Speak an intimidation yourself, check honey. with advantage? Intimidation? <laughs> with advantage. I'm not intimidating, am I? Where is my... Oh, I guess Listen. I'm decently <laughs> intimidating. This fire breath can wake your nostrils. <laughs> Okay, well, Son of a bitch. this kid is uh, apparently standing his ground, and he's just like, hey, she's a grown woman. She can make her own decisions. Can I just shut him? <laughs> yeah, sure. Make a strength check. Shut up. He likes the scales. <laughs> 14. He's very flimsy, unfortunately. <laughs> Has not been pre bench pressing or anything, but, you know, you push him aside, and he uh, he just kind of waddles away, and he's, he throws his hands up, and he, like, shoots you Finger. You still think he's triplets, the way that you're... I'll send you guys a squirrel soon. Mr. Hawkins does my bidding too. I will no. send you a squirrel no, no. if tell you where to find me. Keep walking, child. Remember God. this. Turn away and never look uh, back. He will <laughs> kill you. And I fire. You need to, we need to, we need to work on finding you someone who can withstand you, sexually and physically. You know who could do that. Well, sweetheart, he can't right now because he's dead. Oh. You have to admit it. That's how you get over it. You have to admit it. You can't just pretend that he's still alive. Listen, I have the ashes in my breasts. I know. They're in yep. here, but I don't want to. They're going to get a little sweaty. As you guys are talking on the middle of the street, uh, right outside of the Yawning Portal, which is a pretty busy area of town, um, what's everyone's passive perception? What? Uh, uh, passive, it should be right outside. 15? Yeah. What? I think yours is a nine. Yeah, yours is a nine. Oh, passive <laughs> wisdom. Mine's very low. Okay. And Lilith, what was yours? Two. two. Two? I am. Oh, wait, no, ten. 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 Low. ten. I got a nine. Okay. <laughs> well, for the most part, you guys are busy trying to tend to the scene right now at hand with Steve, triplet Steve, <laughs> and uh, getting kicked out of Yanni Portal, having to find a new place to recover for the night. <coughs> Lala. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Out in the corner of your eye, you have been actively for six months now looking for something shiny to take. What is it? And <laughs> though it's difficult to see, something definitely catches your eye quickly. Off My heart will in go the on all of a sudden. <laughs> and it shines, and, and, and it's just a flash, but then a cloak goes over it, like a black cloak, as if they didn't want it to be seen. One person is very quickly making their way through this very crowded street right now, and I would say it's probably towards night, having to bend your schedule that you're currently on, Lilith. 
um, and you had gone to the orphanage already. So this is probably closer to about 9 p.m. at night. And the streets are still quite lively. Um, but you saw something shining in the torches. I'm going to whisper to Moira that I will be right back and I will meet you guys at the tree. No! And then I'm going to take off. Okay. First I'm going to cast invisibility on myself and then I'm going to take off. Okay. So. You cast. Oh. Can we turn down the flutes in my head? <laughs> I the very in the head's loud. Can I? Before she disappears, can yes. I do a locate object on her bow just so I can keep track of where she is? Um, you you have to see the object, right? And how long does it last? Is it a hundred, a, a thousand feet, or is it? It's a uh, thousand feet. Yes. It's a thousand feet. Okay, yeah. So I'll say that you see it very quickly as you see Lala zip away, zip away as she tells you that right before she turns invisible, because you know she's going to, so you won't be able to see it. And you cast locate object on that uh, very specific bow and track where she is on the map of your mind. Lala, you start to fly up ahead as high as you can to get that vantage point, to follow that person in a black cloak. Now, don't forget, it's dark. It is um, busy streets right now. But I do have dark and vision. You do have dark vision. And even so, um, I'll have you roll a perception check with advantage, because you've already spotted the person, as you're trying to see where they might be heading towards. Okay, oh, that one's not great. That one's better. That was a natural 20 for my second oh. one. Okay. It is incredibly hard to see here, and so without very high perception check there, you would have not been able to spot somebody in a black cloak in blackness and darkness in the middle of these very low-lit lamp streets. Um, But you see this person kind of almost zigzag through and then quickly enter a nearby location. You guys are actually... um, Yanni Portal, Portal, excuse me, is in... Uh, and nearby, right off of Rail Run Street and the Castle Ward. So you're in a, f- a very nice neighborhood, all things considered. One of the more revered areas, busier areas. Um, and you see them almost make a sharp left and walk into a beautiful, ornate entryway. Right before he turns, I'm just going to cast Hunter's Mark. Okay. Just, just that. You do so? Just so I can keep an eye on him. And you're keeping at a safe distance. You're not super close, but you're not like following right behind them. How far do you want to drop back behind them? Um, maybe like no more than 10 feet. 10 feet? Just because, I mean, I'm invisible. Mm-hmm. So I would still like you to roll a, um, I would still like you to roll a stealth check then, even with the invisibility. Okay. And uh, add plus 10. Plus 10? Yes, plus 10. And actually, I like invisibility a lot, and I think that I'd like to buff it a bit, so also give yourself advantage. Oh. That's a house rule. I okay. mean, it's. I feel like plus 10 is not enough for, for Being invisibility. Being completely invisible. No. Okay, well, no. my first roll with, uh, with a plus 10, and uh, my stealth bonus is was 26. Nice. Good lord. Um, oh, and then my second one was a natural one, so let's go with the 26. Okay. So you're able to keep 10 feet back without too much trouble, thankfully, and not raising any suspicion. At some point, you do feel this man, woman, you don't know what it is, look behind, and you catch something very interesting with the face, because there, there's no face. They're wearing a mask. And you have heard of these people through your six month stay in Waterdeep, though you do not see them often, and they are usually with a very large protected group of people, rather carried in palaquins, or they move in a very large unit, or they just never leave their homesteads or their the places that they tend to frequent. So this is a masked lord of Waterdeep, of which there are not many. A masked lord. A masked lord of Waterdeep. There are people in this town or the city that are are known some 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 people have whispered about who might be behind these masked lords but there is somebody who oversees it uh laurel silverhand uh who is the open lord of wallet water deep so the person with, who does not wear a mask who represents all these masked lords um however there is an a masked lord of water deep walking into an iron rock gate in a beautiful manor home in the castle ward alone with a black cape over them and you saw their face very vividly. The most interesting thing that you noticed, especially with 
I'm gonna say, I'm gonna give you a perception check to see if you can really pick out the eccentricity of the, of the face here, even with the mask behind it. Um, perception, did you say with advantage? Or no? Um, nope, just a general just perception check. Just a regular check. perception. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, 21. Okay. The most interesting mm -hmm. thing that you noticed, like <clears throat> that, was that the eyes were yellow. What? Yeesh. <laughs> Which yes. is a little jarring. <laughs> And they looked back, and the only reason you caught this is because they were looking directly at you. But thankfully, it seemed to be through you. But it's like within 10 feet, and there's not, it's not as busy of an area. People are not hanging right outside of this entrance point. And they just kind of look, and then they turn back around, and they start to walk through the Iron Rock Gate into this homestead of some sort. What do you do? Follow them. Okay. So, you continue in takes a moment as you're walking up this kind of cobblestone path and there's actually overgrown grass here. definitely flying. Oh yes, excuse me, they're walking, excuse me, they're walking <laughs> down a cobblestone path and there's definitely over, overgrown grass here um, as you're flying behind 10 feet and just trying to remain in stasis. Um, as this cloak person walks up to the front, they stand there for a moment and you see them very subtly open the door and then push it open into a completely empty dark hall completely dark i'm going to try to um catch up okay as quietly and as sneakily as i can just right. so i don't get shut out roll a secondary stealth check <laughs> oh that would be a uh 15. okay wait do i get my for the invisibility? Yes, because you're still then invisible. 25. 25, okay, sounds good. Um, so, once more, you feel as if you might be giving way, but you're, you slip in just through the crack of that door. They, do, they open it up just enough to let themselves in, and then they closed it behind them. You slipped right on in, still invisible. And right now you're hovering inside of a completely dark, humongous manner that does not seem to be lit at all in any sort of way. It's a little alarming, um, considering the fact that areas around here are very revered, and any anybody who's an open lord, I mean, excuse me, a master lord of water to deep, clearly would be having probably hosting people or have their whole families here. This is a, a true manor, so to speak, and it's, uh, it's incredibly beautiful. There's marble, it's like black marble, almost with veins of this jutted silver. It's beautiful. And the walls are kind of all carved into this kind of columns that stand out as well. Same black marble with very strong uh, silver veins. Um, can I have you roll a perception check to try to gather what you're seeing in here? Um, 13. 13, okay. Yeah. It's a little hard to see with the black marble on the ground and this black cloaked person. Even with your dark vision, everything... Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. Is that... That's wisdom, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Am I locating them then? Uh, no, you can still see the person. Oh, okay. They're still in there. Just so you know, with Hunter's Mark, <laughs> I have advantage on wisdoms to find them? Wisdom oh, no. Checks? You you can see them okay. as clear as day. They're just walking very <laughs> <that> slowly <laughs> into uh, the middle of... Almost, it seems like the middle of the marbled area. And in this very dark, black, cold, quiet area, you see they like almost move their head to the right and then move their head to the left and then almost fall to the ground on one knee for a moment and like shake their head. You don't know what's happening. They stand up once more and they begin to walk forward. Now in this room, though there's columns on either side, three on either side, three on the left, three on the right, all made out of this black marble. There's not, there's not much here. There's no couches. There's no paintings. Um, there's just like almost panels on the floor and there's a fireplace on the far end. And there does seem to be some sort of portrait above the fireplace, but you cannot see it right now. Um, it's too dark and it's, there's not enough of color understanding right now for you to gauge what that might be. Mm -hmm. But you see this cloaked figure walk forward towards the fireplace and walk into the fireplace. Pfft, gone. I guess I'll go look at the fireplace. Make a perception check on the fireplace. Seems like... Oh, ten. Ten? Yeah. 
You don't see much. Make a, I'm going to have you make an arcana check real quick. That's even worse than my perception. Eight. You can't see much of anything. You don't know how they disappeared. You don't know what. You just know they walked into the fireplace and they were gone. And there's nothing in here except this kind of cold, icy, marbled room. But they definitely had something, and they were definitely doing something weird. Hmm. I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit closer to the fireplace because okay. I'm not quite ready to give it up. But I also Moira, just so you know, Lala right now is kind of getting on the cusp of your locate mm-hmm. object. Like you can still follow and feel where her bow is but she had been hitting like 900 feet and then 950 and she's right she's hovering right on that mark of about a thousand feet away or so uh it's a little nerve-wracking because you may lose track of her um and so lala what did you want to do again i was gonna get close to the fireplace and see if it was like can i try and get them to head in that direction um just out of nervousness yeah sure i don't like that she's um It's a little difficult with, uh, I'm going to say, with uh, poor old Janishka here being as drunk as she is. Really yeah. good with one um, <laughs> um, Can I find a wheelbarrow? I'm going to... So you walk towards the, the you, walk, you go towards the fireplace? Uh, I'm going to poke it with my short sword. <laughs> okay. Because of your perception check and your arcana check... You didn't realize what this was until it was too late. Oh, oh no! So oh, no. you walk into the fireplace and <laughs> off your vision. Nope, nope, I'm running. I'm running. Lala. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> what, did, Lala, what did I do? <laughs> you don't know where you are right now. But you are in some sort of very damp, dark and it, it is slimy, and it is gross, and there's stalactites and stalagmites everywhere. And you just see before you that black cloak figure running towards a very, very strange object that you've never seen before. It's this black square. It's huge. It's almost ooze-like. It's and it's pretty big. So, what's the range on sending stones? As this is happening with you into this island. massive open chamber of stalactites and stalact- stalagmites, realizing maybe a little too late that this was a teleportation circle. Well, um, is it too late to turn around? <laughs> um, Just let's see in a second. Me. Let's see. Um, so, uh, in the meantime, the four of you, I'm running. As having she goes had up, Lala just... disappeared, you relay this to everybody? Of course. Yeah. Okay. But as okay. I'm running, like... Where are you going? Anytime Lala is, like, or out of our thousand-foot range, I know something is wrong. She wouldn't go that far without telling me. So I'm telling you all. I've lost her, and I'm going to the last place I saw her, and I'm just okay. booking it. Do we go? Let's go. You gotta right. run as Life. fast as you can. I basically can walk. walk. I'm so big. You guys all begin running forward as quickly as you possibly can. Um, running and running and running. <laughs> it's very <laughs> difficult for Janishka. She is moving almost a uh, quarter speed less than she was expecting to just because of how uh, particularly tipsy she is, I'll say. Um, but while this is happening, you guys are all running. It's a crowded street nonetheless, and you're still trying to kind of navigate in the direction that... Can I just have you roll? Let's have this be a survival check. Oh, uh, just Moira, who's leading oh the path. Oh, God. Four! This energy needs to be cleaned because our rolls are not good. <laughs> <laughs> so, it Moira, you yeah, trying to recollect on the map of your mind the direction that Lala is going, you kind of know that it was kind of somewhere in this general direction. You can't remember the exact cardinal points or the way to move, and you actually hit what maybe could be it. It's like this building, um, this dark building. Um, it, it, it seems to be a, a homestead, maybe a shop in the morning. You don't know, but, but this is maybe where she is. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then you think to yourself, oh, maybe? And then you look down to the right, and there's just a line of businesses, and probably 50 deep, and you think any of them could have Lala Is in there it. anyone 
around other people. There were a couple people wandering on the street. Uh, a couple people who uh, shouted out Dronishka's name as she was following and standing hey. along. <laughs> who seemed familiar with her. See you tomorrow. Um, uh, but you guys have actually been walking in uh, a direction that is a little bit closer towards the trade and southward, which is in the direction of Helmsfold. Uh, uh, Helms, excuse me, not Helms, Helms Hall. Um, did you roll perception? I'll have you roll perception check on that just to see if I can, if you can see, if you find anyone familiar, I guess. Uh, we're speaking to a character. 19. Okay. Um, I will say that there are two currently orphans on the street playing music that you and Lilith are familiar with. Um, uh, it's, uh, we'll call him, let me find my names, my interesting <laughs> names. Uh, Heralda and Acnes. There we go. Heralda. And Agnes? And Acnes. Um, going to go up to one of them and, and kneel before them and say, I need you to remember, if you saw a black cloaked figure. Hi, Moira. How you doing? Hi, Lilith. How are you? Look at we're playing with your instruments. Darling, ah. this is this is very important. Did uh. you see a black cloaked figure walk by? Why? What's going on? Um, we may have lost a friend, and we're trying to find her. Oh. Oh. Okay. Um. Uh, it seems like uh, Geralda doesn't really have a recolle recollection. She's younger, she's a little bit too excited. Uh, but Acnes, uh, they like have, a, there's a, f the, there's some some sort of recollection seems to kind of dawn across them. Yes? Sorry, it's the speaker's pointing right at us. Oh, it's no. so loud in my head. Oh, no. I hear you. There's the speaker. There we okay, go. Is that better? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> too good sound. Too good a sound. Um, <laughs> good job. Um, Acnes. 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 Acnes um, yeah. So Acnes does seem yeah. to be in. Um, I actually think so. They kind of ran right past and didn't even listen to our music or donate any money. Look how much money we have. And they show you it. There's so much silver and copper in there. They probably got a solid like two gold worth like of jingling in there. It's a lot. Would you like to give me some? No. No. Dronishka, no. Who is she? Don't worry about it. Um, Acnes, do you remember? What direction they were going? Did you see them go anywhere? Or go into a storefront or something? Um, no, they were just running real fast. Okay. That's all. I don't think they went into stores because they're closed unless they're crazy and they own a store in there. They they don't have they make money. They don't give us any. Did you maybe see if they went around a corner or if they just kept going? I don't really know more than just they ran past us. If that helps. Thank you, darling. Oh. I'd like to make a perception check and see what other places besides storefronts. Sounds good, and I, I, you can also probably do a tracking check too. I think if you'd like, which I believe would be your survival that. skill check, if you Nature? guys have any uh, survival. No. Survival. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Fourteen. On survival or on survival? Survival. So you take a moment, and you're you guys had run pretty quickly uh, soon after you guys trying to make your way through this area. Uh, you look for the footprints, and you are just trying to sense with your animal senses as well if you can scent lava at all. Um, you do recollect, and I'm fairly certain that your squirrel <laughs> friend has the ability Pop to, chance. on perception checks, where tracking down somebody they know have advantage on those perception checks. So you remember that that okay. even if you cannot see their footprints, which you do not see. Okay. Um, you have a feeling that maybe your squirrel friend can help, especially since they've been spending so Mr. much time Hopkins. with Lala. Mr. Hopkins, you're much needed. <laughs> I'd like you to make a perception check. You must find Auntie Lala. Auntie, I don't know if you like being called Twelve. Auntie. Twelve. Oh, and they get advantage. Twelve. <laughs> um, and do you have the animal stance down or not? Because they probably have a uh, an addition to their uh, their scent perception check. Please hold. It's probably plus mm -hmm. two, I'm gonna guess. It might be plus uh, higher, but we can always modify it once we come back. But Yeah, there's not anything for a squirrel in here. Yeah, for now, until we okay, find the uh, things. This is all new. So now she's leveled up. 14. We'll say it's plus two. Good, 14. Mr. So he starts to kind of leap uh, in a squirrel like form uh, in different directions. He's kind of like Oh, he's a flying squirrel. So he's like a super leapy. Yeah, he's like jumping oh, yeah. around uh, with a lot of a lot of energy. Um, he does seem to be going further along. 
like he does seem to be moving that distance uh, in the uh, in the direction that you guys were looking past. Yeah. So Moira, unfortunately, it seems like you might have to rely on a flying squirrel right now for tracking down your friend. That's fine. So, as you guys are led in this general direction that you feel like Mr. Uh, Hopkins can uh, help you find Lala and Lala, so. Um, are there any bats or cave-dwelling creatures near me? Um, near? As in very close? Probably not. Uh, these, this cave is large and tall, and if you are trying to find any sort of creature like that, you might have to fly up to find them, but also you have a feeling that if there are any, they are likely sleeping since they are not disturbed right now. Uh, okay. I'm just gonna keep an eye out. I'm gonna fly up, but I'm not gonna fly too high up. Sure. Uh, just so I can keep an eye on the hooded figure running towards... Can I have you the, make um, a perception check just if you're keeping an eye yeah. out? The, the, like, oozy thing? Yes. Uh, 18. 18. Okay. So what you can catch is that somewhere further in the cave, there does seem to be a family of somewhere between 50 to 100 bats. So there is a very large bat mm-hmm. community here, but they do seem to be sleeping. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you startle one or awake one, you would, you would, it's kind of anyone's role how that could happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. You also catch that this cave seems to be natural of sorts. It's some sort of underground cave. Um, you don't see much of a way out. You don't see any, like, doors that necessarily lead out. You don't know how people maybe get in or how they found this spot right away. Um, but what you do catch is that there's very thin, narrow bridges. And it seems like a lot of the stalagmites and stalactites here are... It's not easy to walk around them. The person, the cloaked figure jumping to, a, to and fro was very clearly doing it meticulously and being very cautious about which bridges they were stepping on. Um... This place also does seem empty than you would expect, and s- still in that far end, that far corner, you're not getting the best visual. You did see that black square, that pretty big black square. Um, it's kind of, it's, it, it, it's a little alarming because you think you see it moving a bit. Um, I'm just gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep an eye out on it. Honestly, okay. I don't know what else to do. All right. So you just kind of. Do you want to roll to hide? Um. Yeah. If there's like a little nook. Yes. Nook yes. But I can just like. And how far away are you keeping? This this actual area is pretty large. It's about I'd say half of a football field. So it's um, about 250. Honestly, I want to stay close enough that I can keep an eye on it. Okay. Um, and whatever's happening, but I do want a place to, like, almost perch. Okay. All right, so uh, you want to keep a healthy distance. Yeah. So, like, probably a solid 150 feet away. 120 with dark vision. If you want to be able to actually see. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Because they do seem to be kind of moving a bit. Okay. Um, and would this be stealth? Yes. Okay. Uh, 29. <coughs> So you hunker down in that invisible form behind one of those stalagmites and you just peer off in the corner. And every time they move, they are moving very slowly. Like it did take a while, but that black square is moving slowly. And it seems to be the black cloak figures right next to it and just moving as well. Almost as if these two figures are just moving in some sort of direction in unison together down one of these very thin, narrow, long bridges. Um, that connects everything together. And you just fly every five feet as they move every five feet. It takes a while, though. So, as this is happening, the rest of you guys, with a very drunk Janishka, no. get finally brought to the front of what looks like an iron rock gate. And Mr. Hopkins, very, very um, uh, captainly, turns to you and goes, He's so cute. Thank you. She went into here. And he jumps in your back and he hides in your back. Yeah. Can I kick open the gate? Let's first check it. I'm just gonna kick it. <laughs> yes. I'm just gonna kick open the gate. Uh, okay. Just gonna kick it. Uh, without yeah. any no text on it, just kicking it open. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Can I have you roll a dexterity saving throw, please? Okie dokie. I stop and her. I, 
I need any stop her. I think anybody who's around I'm her, which I sense. think would be I lunge. Well, I you, see her would, kick you would know this, but you <laughs> I are, her back. You, you remember how I mentioned you're slowed down because of your <laughs> yes. stupor? I do. So you're the only one. So as you have a danger sense and oh, you know it's trapped, you'd be like, uh, as the trap goes. Let's see. Let's see first if we could just press it open. I, I'm gonna say because of Moira's choice, anybody so her, poor Mr poor Mr. Hopkins, Rowan, and Lilith, since the three of you guys were all running up with her, I need all three of you guys to make a deck saving throw, please. Sorry. Um, I'm headstrong and stupid. What can I say? It's a what what dex? A deck saving throw. Oh, Lord. Not I believe in the Lord, well, but Okay. Um, four. Four? So bye bye. <laughs> 18, okay. So as this like trap goes off, you hadn't realized that there's clearly something here, some sort of arcana means of some sort of trap that's got set off. The moment you kicked it open, you were blown back, oh, thankfully not knocked prone, Whoa. with some sort of fiery explosion. So if you failed that check, uh, any anybody underneath a, uh, it's a 16, who, anyone who rolled 16 and under takes 22 points of fire damage. Oh my god! Yeah. I'm not and then dead. anyone. Wait, oh, everyone oh. within 10 feet of me gets resistance to spell damage. Okay. So half of that then? Yeah. What is it? What spell is that? It's an aura. Paladin? Paladin aura? So yeah, you guys are able to hold aura. on. I'm not um, as far. No, you're not as far. You're, you just see your friends as you sense danger. I told and right you. as your mouth opens, the explosion blah, goes on. Whoa. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Started, you just stumble that really extra. Really you just stumble that extra twenty feet. You people, you got me fired today, and you got me fired Sorry. today. Sorry. Sorry. Dad joke. Sorry. A very strong spell on that front door, and as it takes a moment, as your eyes are adjusting, you know that you're in the castle ward, in a manor house of someone very affluent, who probably filled this place with as much protection magic as possible. We are inside the house, or we're for, we're you are right outside that front gate, outside. and you did not open the gate. The gate just rejected you guys. The moment you touched the gate, it set you guys all off. It did not knock you prone if you rolled higher than sixteen. But anybody else, you guys got blown back and but fell on Lola the ground. Lola was fine. Because right. she was yeah. so there are also people on the street who are starting to get like curious about the sound mm-hmm. and the noise. It created a very loud sound. Don't worry about it. I have. Reaction. They blame it on me. I, I, I cast Pass Without Trace on all of us. Okay, sounds good. So as everyone's kind of looking at you guys, My friends are Rowan, fine. you focus, you mm-hmm. cast Pass Without a Trace. Also, how is Mr. Hopkins doing after that explosion? Oh, he was tucked away, so he was back here. Okay. He barely missed getting a bit singed. Okay. However, this half of my hair is I now I will shot. say that he is <laughs> currently a burnt squirrel, and you might need to double a little healing into him. Because oh. tiny, tiny, tiny squirrels like that, unfortunately, oh. don't have many hit points. Well, that's quick. I can, I can heal. He's, he's looking a little yeah. bird. My happy. I take Mr. Hopkins. That means it because I was the one that it was my fault. I might sure. Yes. Have I caught you up with them yet? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, oh. you, you miss. You sl- yeah. slurred the stop. Way. That was me healing. Okay. Whoops. And then you yeah, stumbled twenty feet forward yeah. or so. I'm not with them. I am healing Sorry, Mr. Hopkins. Fuck you too. Um, you might not need What's that. happening? Six. <laughs> Just, I only oh, so he held six. up six points? Yes. Okay, so he he very slowly from the touch of Moira's um, healing wor- uh, healing power, what did you call it? Kirwins? Kirwins. Or Kirwins. Uh, touches Mr. Good old Mr. Uh, Hopkins, Hopkins and, and slowly his fur grows back and his little mangled hands. <laughs> And he's like he's like doing little squirrel meeps and like just nuzzling with you, but he just had his first blow with near death. <laughs> Poor old squirrely. You better get used to it, kid. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Is he okay? The next time I try and I kick down the gate, I'm gonna make sure no one um, else is near. However, it is still it seems like an active trap and it is still locked. So Do you can you? Can you can you un- can you unlock it? Is it worth it? I mean Well we have to find is. Lala. Well, oh, what if she's not really in there? <laughs> hey, no, no Hoppy, we, Hopkins would not tell us wrong. Movie. Also, Moira, uh, is locate object a concentration spell? Why can't I find it? Why can't I find this spell in my object? Up to ten minutes. It, and is it concentration or is it just a general? In general. All right, oh, solid. maybe it's oh, it's called something else. So I will say, you sense 
on the very cusp of your 1,000 feet locate object, Lala's arrow. You, you sense it. You, uh, not, you, uh, sorry, you died on your bow, right? Yeah. So you sense Lala's bow very deep beneath you, like underneath the house, like almost 900. You don't know how far deep it is underground, but it's like down and like down. I'm going to relay all this information. Maybe they just have a very deep wine cellar, but it's here. I can sense her bow. I, I, I cast locate object on her, and I know that she's here. Okay. She's just under the house. Is there a padlock on the gate? Doesn't seem to be padlocked. But is there some sort of lock on it? No lock. Oh. I'd like to make well, an then. arcana check on the gate. Okay. Yes. Sure. <laughs> it's dangerous, by the way. Uh, I'm going to have to do something else. 18. 18? Oh, it clearly is enchanted with a magical protection property. A fire a Is fire there spell. a way to open fire the door spell. from the inside? Yes. Just like a protective fire spell. What? Is there a way to, door, a way to open the gate from the inside? It's hard to tell. You think for something of this caliber, you'd need something like Dispel Magic, or you would need to find an alternative way to get over the door. Um, well, over the door. It is a it is a solid 20-foot high gate. It's a gate. Well, like a teleport foot. on the other side. So can I. I. I have Misty Step. Could I jump? But we just have to get that And if Yuz can teleport, right. maybe... She can probably fly, but... I could use my dagger maybe to... Like press in between the slats and we'll try to it. jimmy. Yeah. But if it's enchanted, if it's yes, and it does appear. And with an eighteen check, you Why think that you if you that? touch any of my the gate or the entrance because point, you will be shot <laughs> once more. Well, okay. uh, which if I rage, which the, I uh, yes, dimension. Door. <coughs> yes. Fight dimension fire door. with fire. Dimension door, you can you can bring someone else through. Can you fight fire with fire? Again? Dimension door, you can bring someone else through, right? Yeah. Level. But bring me through. I four. Can't get in. Level four. Level four. I think that on, on the level four dimension spell, like I think, and then as you level it up, I think you can bring more people. Uh, but if you have the door, if you have the spell open, and you want to read that spell just to clarify that. That'd be awesome. I can also pull it open here. <coughs> I can miss you, step. You, you can, can turn into a, long, a, a creature a your size or smaller is carrying gear up to its carrying capacity. The creature must be within five feet of you when you cast a spell. And I believe that is, you can only take one person, it looks like. So, who would you like to take if you want to do Dimension Door? But they have to be the same size, right? Are, are yep. dragon uh, the same size smaller? or smaller. So I cannot. Uh, I think you guys are technically the same size. Yeah? I mean, yeah. I am giant. Uh, you're actually six, uh, you're like six foot something? We, it was six two or six seven. So you technically oh. qualify as a medium creature still. There you go. Oh. Perfect. Yeah. You should All right. Me. However, I am resistant no, if I rage. No, you're pretty useless. What? In this what? drunken state. No, but I won't be able to get in. What? Unless. Can you sober up? I think Wait. I could. Couldn't I put? Couldn't you blow some fire and oh. melt the wrought iron door? If it's an enchantment, it doesn't matter about this. Uh. Right? Oh, master of our world. How wide are the repeat? slats? If I, not my fire breath cannot do anything to. Seems like whatever this spell is, it's a protective magical spell, so you likely can't, unless there's some way to dispel the magic, um, it likely will not have any If I'm effect. raging and I touch it. You can try to do anything you want. No, You're allowed to try. Don't do that. We're just going to, let's, I'll just kind of put it to the other side. I'm resistant to everything. I'm going to use my misty step, you turn into a Wait, I'm door. resistant to fire damage. Yeah, so you should have taken half of that half. So if you're if you half have paladins, half. well, because you have paladins resistance, right? Yes. So you should have had half that resistance if you're able to bestow that, and then half of, half of that. And don't forget, we always round up because it's about positivity. Great. <laughs> Even in House the face rules. of death. <laughs> Even in the place of death. So positivity. Does anyone know how to find out what this chant is and make it go away? I'm just gonna moonbeam on the other side, or not moonbeam, misty step on the other side. Not moonbeam, <laughs> not fucking moonbeam. So can not she, again. Can Rowan get <laughs> over without? Uh, on no, her she. Own? Like I said, she's turning into a hawk. You do misty step. I'm misty step. She you two go me. through a door. We're over. Yes. So yes. with with an agreement and Jernishkin having to be told that exact thing three times until she gets yeah, it. Oh, God um, it. All of you guys in unison use your three spells. You fly over without too much trouble with little squirrely, um, I'm going to say it's like a rescuer's down back. under. Oh, yeah, where like uh, uh, Mr. Hopkins is just like flying on your back, a lot of rescuers <laughs> down under as you're hopping over the entrance yeah. points. Um, 
Uh, Misty Step is for Moira, right? Yes. So on the other side, without too much trouble, you're able to make it through. And um, Lilith, you dimension door, you grab drunk Junishka, uh, and you zip through without too much problem as well and peer right on the other side. So you guys are safely on the other side of the door. You're it's, so impressive. It's a very you. dangerous door. However, you also have a feeling, Rowan, that there's likely different sorts of traps or magical mm-hmm. effects here that will be set off if you're not cautious about it. So you have, um, you still can concentrate and have passed without a trace with everybody, so you guys are also stealth. So can I have you guys roll both a stealth check and perception check checks on both of them? is not going to ask me. Ah! That's 20 on one of them. Which, what are we doing? Stealth? I'm going to say uh, per- stealth check first and then perception check after. My perception check is a 20. My stealth is... My stealth is oh, 15. Wait. What, what armor do I have? Oh, because I think I might have disadvantage. No, I'm okay. Um, 13 perception, 9 stealth. But stealth, you're adding, I'm in, you're I'm adding 10. Top. You add oh, 10. Because it passed, passed without trace. Okay. Wait, on stealth, you add 10? Yes. Okay. Oh, so right now, scholar. I'm at what was I? 26. For stealth? Yes, and a nat 20 for perception. Nice. 25 for stealth and 15 for perception. Good, good. 20 for stealth, and we don't add anything to the next one, so 10. <laughs> Little drone stealth. Mm-hmm. And 19 then? For, for stealth. stealth. And then, um, oh. hang on. 13. Perception. Oh, perception, I'm 12. And Never with the mind, hawk, you, I think, is a hawk, I think you might have advantage on perception checks. So just one more perception check on that one, too. Oh, oh it says yeah. skills perception yeah. plus four. Nice. Okay, there okay. you go. Yes. Yeah, and then hawk is advantage on wisdom, perception, that relies on yep. check. Okay, so whatever this is, it's four. <laughs> oh, so 18 plus four is 22. All right, sounds good. So I will I'm say 12. I, I messed up. everybody. Oh, 12. I will <laughs> say everybody except Dronishka still notices a couple of things. Most distinctly, um, that the grass is overgrown here, and that this manor looks, though it's opulent and beautiful, a uh, very ornate exterior. This beautiful black marble that none of you guys have seen before. Um, it kind of looks like if you're familiar a little bit with almost that very. Uh, rampant style in like the 60s and 70s with that very like florally design and the gold trim with the black marble. (laughs) This is kind of the style of this home. Uh, It's a little outdated even for the design and the flavor texture and the palette of Water Havians. Uh, But it definitely stands out. This home probably costs a pretty, pretty penny, but it does not look like it's been lived in. It looks cold and stoic. And all of the windows are drawn drawn and there's no light coming out of any of them. And as you're going towards the entrance, what you catch very clearly is some sort of glistening, uh, some sort of glistening enchantment on the front door once more. Um, very clear. If I've been spending a lot of time in the castle ward, getting to know the, the people as a resident paladin, mm-hmm. uh, would I have heard any rumors or gossip or anything about this house and the person that bought it? Maybe. Okay, let's have this Maybe. be. I like that question. So let's have this buddy. Um, I'll have you roll a persuasion or a history check. So either or. And you can just roll and take whichever one's higher as you have been discussing and having discourse with all these people. Eight. Eight? Yeah. Okay. There's not a lot about what this house might be, but you can maybe deduct that someone of a very rich, noble class would have a home like this. It doesn't make a lot of logical sense. You haven't seen a lot of manors or houses like this in the castle ward. They're often guarded quite heavily, but active. Um, And usually they're not as visually accessible. And the fact that things are overgrown here, and this is kind of in like it's on the edge of the castle ward in the trade way, uh, trade area. So you're 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 noticing that, but that's about all you can gauge. I'm going to open the door very very slowly, but I want you all to step back. Fa. I very have some sense of danger. Slowly open the door, okay. just very 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 slowly, just like she always does. This. Take take a whole sixty seconds. No, okay. No. All right, so as you walk forward and you take a moment, having known that there is definitely some sort of glisten or some sort of glyph on this door as you're approaching it, yes, like a, um, 
almost because with your high perception checks and with the way that light is refracting right now and as you guys are all stealth, you can catch that there's some very faint moonlight glistening off the front door that shows you that this is in fact has some sort of enchantment on it. So as you press your hand against the door uh, handle, which does not appear to be locked as it clicks, however, you do feel a surge of something go through you. Can I have you make a wisdom saving throw? Love this 16. 16? Yeah. Okay. It takes a moment as you hold it, and you feel a surge of something go through you. And it just takes a moment, and whatever it was trying to affect you passes. But it was a strong spell. And it was not a good spell. Yeah. That was a very um, uncomfortable feeling. Did I get a sense of if it was on, like a like a possession. Make an arcana check. Oh god, I don't have that. Ah, oh, that's funny! I love these Ooh. dice. I am always rolling with these <laughs> okay. dice. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as you touched the <laughs> handle, you felt like your mind was trying to go mad, so you no, no. effectively felt like it was some sort of madness that was trying to install itself in you. Like some sort of mentally disturbing, like, it you, likely had it affected you, you wouldn't have yeah. had your mind. Do I get the sense that this is something that, like, a protection from good and evil would help? Potentially, yeah. Okie dokie. Uh, don't touch the fucking door handle. <laughs> that's a that's a big no-no. That's a bad spice boy. But the door is open right now. It's swung <laughs> open very eerily and quietly, because yeah. Moira kind of touched it and had to step back. Touch it. That's not but you see inside just a blackness, just darkness, just no light cold stoicness, kind of almost like a wind of nothing hits your nose, no flavor, no scent. I'm going to very cautiously start stepping in. Very, very, very cautiously. Okay, sounds good. I'm flapping in. Flapping your rings in with yeah, little yeah, Mr. Rescuers down on here, yes. under Mr. Hopkins on top so of I'm, you. I'm Ew. looking around with me hawk sight. Sounds good. Roll a perception check with advantage. Um, also have a perception check for you once you open the door into the home. I have to do this? Yes. I'm so Well, you don't have to, actually. I would say Drunishka's just kind of enjoying everybody else dealing with stuff, and she's just walking in nice and quiet. 23. <laughs> yeah. But not touching the door. Uh, 23. 12. 12. And Lilith, if you wanted to roll a perception check once the door had kicked open, what would you do? 15. 15, okay. So, Rowan, and though it's hard to communicate in hawk form, unfortunately, hmm. unless someone has speak with animals. Yeah, but someone, does, do you have speak with animals? I do! Okay. Trip. Boom! Um, Let's talk. Very quickly, you, very quickly, you hear Rowan doing like a very soft, like hawk call, as uh-huh. if she had discovered something. And Lilith, you also caught this. Um, a couple of the floor, marbled floor pa- panels, do seem to be glistening a bit, as if there is some sort of magical property on them. Rowan, with your check, you are able to discern which ones are safe to step on. So you can relay that news. Though Lilith, you know you're, it's harder to see exactly which ones it might be. Rowan is able to, in her hawk voice, <laughs> communicate with Can I just see what that looks like? I would love to see what that looks like. Oh. That's an odd dialect. I, I can't, I think, I think there are some that are bad. That was uh. bad. Yes, some of these are bad to step Why on. Why is That's Barb a good talking one. so much? You step I, on this. Dronishka, <laughs> be very careful where you step. Whoa. Otherwise, I guess you might explode. I don't I'm really know. I'm hovering over each... Okay, square, doing my... Follow the bird! <laughs> Follow the bird. Can someone just watch, keep an eye on me? Okay, I'll, I'll keep an eye on you. Do we have a... I'm I holding have, Danishka's grab, hand. I'm, I'm like, I, I have her with my claws. Oh, I'm guiding so her to the Dragging her by the horse. Sounds good. <laughs> then I will have everybody, except because you're technically flying, so just Danishka, Lilith, and Moira, with advantage, please make a dex check. As you're trying to hop from the correct oh. black marble... Section. It's kind of almost like you're in a mall when you're a kid and you're trying to hopscotch yeah. on all the things that aren't lava. And do it, uh, this has nothing to do with our stealth, Nine. so we don't. Nope, do it. just a dex, straight dex Same. with advantage, please. Nine. Nine. Oh, with advantage. Nine? Nine. Uh-huh. With advantage? Uh-huh. Oh, crap. All right. I'll take it. Um, okay. 16. 16, okay. So, um, <laughs> Moira, you're able, luckily, like, as the hawk is helping you go from oh, one to the other. Oh, sorry, not Moira. Sorry, Dronishka. You are, uh, I'll say that Rowan's trying to play, like, cat and mouse with you, so you're actually having fun trying to capture the hawk, who I think you are, have been role-playing as you don't understand as Rowan. No. Okay. <laughs> so. Don't eat it! It's just a bird. 
Don't yep. eat it. But you want to catch it right now. Oh, come here, little bird. Yes. Very deft. Janishka, that's our friend. It's short Rowan. turn. Stop rolling. He's like this eat big. It. That's not. <laughs> yes. God, this bird's so loud. But the bird is helping Janishka hop from location to location. Oh, but you guys were kind of. Just don't <laughs> eat it. Frustrated with how slow she was going, so you guys decided to track your own. Unfortunately, having not realized together, you guys have, I'll say you're hopping almost together one after one. Uh, you had accidentally stepped on one of the uh, wards. Can I have a dex saving throw from both of you, please? Is she within 10 feet? Dragon feet? scotch. Um, she is, yes. Okay, she's gonna get, if she gets injured, she gets resistance to spell death. Mm-hmm. Just oh. a dex? Oh, don't use the metal ones. Yes. I should have said that before. Don't use the middle one. I rolled in that one. <gasps> oh man. So okay. Oh. Then I'm sorry. There's no advantage, right? No, this is just a dex check. So, and what did you roll? 16. Oh wait. Sixteen. Sixteen. Do I plus my dex? No, not not with a one. And you rolled a sixteen. So you're able to. The one goes off. I'm gonna I'm gonna describe this a little bit, and it's gonna be a little flavor text. So, uh. Lilith, you get too excited as Moira tries to say no. You set off one of the ground glyphs. Uh, it sends a, a wave of shock. Uh, this one being some sort of electrical energy, a little bit different, as it is a lightning damage. And um, you guys take, uh, what did they roll? 18 points of shock damage. You get resistance. You get half. With resistant halves. However, because you rolled a one, you, because it shocks you back, get knocked prone on another glyph. And I need oh. you to make a secondary oh, deck saving throw, no. Lilith. Don't use the middle one. Don't. Okay. 18. Okay. That's a save. So you're able to stand on this one once you kind of get, you can able, you're able to stand up and you're still within 10 feet of Moira though, thrown back five feet. You are going to take half of this damage, which is 22, so 11 points. Total? 11 points of damage, yep. Total. Oh, she's looking a little singed. She has some of those little wisps of smoke coming from her horns. How are you, how are you feeling? Uh, okay. Wait, we all took that, Very, very right? careful. No, yeah. actually, oh, you yeah. and okay. Drunishka are just hey, 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 happily hey, hopping, hopping okay. on the left-hand side of the very long <laughs> hallway while the two of them deal- are dealing with the, the blows of glyphs uh, one by one. What happened to you? It's electricity coming out of your mouth. Are you okay? Oh. Lily. Are you, are you really hurt? Yes. Yes. What happened? She Got stepped shocked. on a glyph. It's not good. You should freaking soap her up. You should have gotten your coffee. Can I use some water? Hmm? Can I healing word myself? Thank you. You can, yes. Like what do you say to make yourself feel better? I try to start sober right now. By the power <laughs> vested in me by... My magical unicorn Fritz is no longer with us. I cast. Pour one out for the Fritz. A healing spell. I'm seen and point type and told he's a vampire. What did she say? <laughs> and now I get to roll. <laughs> <laughs> Jernishka does some side talking with a hawk while she's drinking water as she's watching Lilith safely across the other oh. side of the. Um, the panel flooring. For this one. No. What level did you cast that at? Triangle? Um, so if you cast it on every level, I think you get to add another. Oh, I'll do a second level. Here. Four. Nice. Wait. One D4. <coughs> so two D4? Yeah. <laughs> Should be pretty level. high up on your healing rate if you want cast it there. Yeah. So you heal up, you feel much better, Lilith. You've been taking a lot of damage. So you stand up, and thankfully that second blow, though it hurt, did throw you in the correct direction. You guys are safely on the other side of the black plant flooring in this marbled house. Rowan, because of your high perception check, you did catch that also it seems like there's some sort of circular shine coming from the fireplace. You're familiar with this. It seems to be a familiar spell that a certain Valindra might have cast on you guys a very long time ago. It looks like a teleportation spell. Okay. Do I get the sense that this is where... Can I feel the bow? Can you feel the what? The bow. Yeah, it seems directly beneath you. Almost. Is she still hawking out? Okay, no, I'm it's going actually, to... No, it's actually moving. So you are, you're almost following her, but yeah. right now it, she's still almost on the cusp, and it seems to be moving 
like towards the back of the house, but like very deep underground. And again, she's still kind of on the the cusp of that that field. You have a feeling she's moving. Do you get a sense for where Lala is? Far underneath us, at least nine hundred yeah, underneath us, which is why I thought there was going to be like a dungeon uh, doors, yeah, or a I cellar or something. Transform back into real. <coughs> Whoa! Oh. <laughs> I told you. What is that? This is why we didn't want you to eat the bird, because it was her. Keep drinking that water. I have yeah. one next. <laughs> How could you not see Mr. Hopkins on me back? You he was on Mr. the hot Hopkins. Did the you little see squirrel, like... Lala, I believe, has gone through the fireplace. The if fireplace. I notice, right. I notice there's a dim residue of a ring, not unlike the one Valindra. A teleportation circle. Precisely. Okay, stand back. If we're gonna take damage from this, I'll take it first. I'm gonna walk right well, through. Well, well, let's idiots. discuss she first. Just <laughs> walk all the time. As as if first. anyone's going to take damage, it's going to be me. Very well. But let's discuss <laughs> first. Ahead of time. <laughs> if anybody's going to die, it's probably going to be me. Okay. okay. She's a martyr. <laughs> and as she oh, says I'm that, stupid. Just proudly walks in, and you do get you see Moira vanish almost. Bye. Like, just no smoke, nothing, just vanish discuss, in a very slight it. light. We really must sit her down sometime. And we should. Really just shake some sense into her. I, can I think her. because she's a noble woman, she thinks that she just knows better than anybody else. She has a death else. wish. Well, yeah. On her high horse. Her, her I love Moira, but dearie. <laughs> okay, she's always she's trying to die with the dolphins and the well, sharks. Well, let's hope she didn't die through this ring. Now, I'm thinking, <laughs> I'd like to make an arcana check. Um, make an arcana check, please. See how sure. to pass through safely. Sure, make an arcana check. Am I falling to my death? I'll let you know. That <laughs> 23. Yeah, 23. Girl. Okay, you actually have a sense that this is not um, enchanted with any sort of protective magics or properties. This does seem to be just a generic kind of. Though, though it's very difficult to make one of these, you have a feeling, just for the pattern and the design of the writing. But um, it is a standard teleportation circle, shouldn't hurt you to walk through it. We may proceed. Great. I'll go last. I should not go last. <laughs> Mr. Hopkins goes right on in after he hears, you may proceed. He's like, after Moira, he jumps on in. <laughs> um, so. Not the best place to be a little squirrel. Moira, yes. you <laughs> appear in a very dark cave full of stalagmites and stalactites, so you cannot see them because your vision is so... Can I pull out Requiter and whisper his name so it's just a very faint, faint light? That would technically not be the spell that Never mind. would be. So the, there's different l levels and yeah. layers yeah, of the yeah, spell. Yeah. So you have a feeling that, though I will say, you could try to cast it on Requiter and then wrap it in your cloak if you take your cloak off and try to. He sits on fire. I don't want to set my cloak on fire. Then I'm going to be a very big flammable torch. No. I'm just going to stand there and wait because there's really <laughs> nothing else I can do. Yeah, because you can hear the sounds of dripping and you smell how damp and wet it is, but you don't know much more than that. Do we see her now? Well, one by one as you appear, you feel like a little squirrel on your leg suddenly and trying to kind of pull on your clothes. Uh, Rowan, you appear as well and the rest of you guys walk in. Those with dark vision can see for a solid 60, 120 feet the layout of this cave, very dark and damp, <laughs> wet, uh, natural uh you don't hear much movement besides the sound of maybe very faint dripping um and maybe the echoes of some sort of creature in the far distance and maybe a little bit of water noise but that's about it can i still locate her yes you can right now actually as you're concentrating and as you are in the darkness you do feel her presence uh moving directly in front of you somewhere about i think a little less than 150 to 200 feet away I'm going to start to move forward just Mr. very slowly at like the slowest pace and do that like gentle feel out in front of me just in case I okay. run into You got who has dark vision here? I have dark vision. I, have eagle, I don't think I have dark. I have dim lit does not impose disadvantage. I can see eagle eyes up, up to a mile with no difficulty. Okay, sounds good. But you don't have dark vision. No, just okay. dim light doesn't. Do. Yes. Mm -hmm. so. so you have a feeling you and you and Moira are moving very slow, trying to feel everything in front of you. The two of you guys are like, oh yeah, they don't have dark vision, so I you can Mr. guide Hopkins them. Back underneath in the armor. Sounds good. <laughs> and if you guys want, you can guide them. They are moving half speed, just Moira, with how dark it is. If you'll take my hand and agree not to make any more rash decisions, I'd be more than happy to guide you through. 
I will try. Can we make this agreement, please? I need yes. you to do more than try. Okay. You I will just well. slip her a little herb. Not <laughs> I'm sobering up. Calm her down. <laughs> make any rash decisions. Thank you. And who's guiding me? I take Moira by the hand, <coughs> mm -hmm. and we're slowly making our way forward. With your little wooden How? hand? With my little wooden hand. Aww. How good are the acoustics in this cave? Pretty dang good. Uh, you guys can hear a lot. So, with my passive perception, could I hear them? Right now, you have your eyes set on very interesting creatures in front of you. I don't think you have a recollection that your friends might be finding looking for you, since you did zip away without asking. However, can I have the four of you guys roll a stealth check to see if you're able to hold it up? And Lala, I would like you also to make a stealth check to see if you can keep up the pretext. Do we still get some bonus because of Pass Without a Trace? Yes, Pass Without a Trace is plus How? 10. Plus 10. How? Okay. Rachel's killing it. This is... So is that your third nat 20? Yeah, fourth. fourth. This is my 30. fourth nat 20. Girl. Wow. 30. Well done. Somebody bless me today. Thank you. Because it's plus 10, yeah? 25? Yeah. So technically, add 30. 20? Okay. 31 on that 20. I really uh, needed that. And Lala, what did you roll? I rolled one. I'm doing the math. 34. Damn. I expect. Can I have you roll just a generic stealth check without any modifications? Just to see what it's like. Mm. Four. Mm. Okay, so. As you guys are very quietly moving forward and realizing that your two friends can't see a gosh darn thing, you both grab onto them one by one and lead them forward as quietly as you can, trying to just sense what might be happening in this very dark cave. <laughs> you smell faint alcohol in her breath, but she's right at that midpoint where like, it's not gonna hinder her, but like, if you don't get a drink in her within the next two hours, she's gonna be a mess. So she's hitting that nice medium right now. <laughs> Lala, because of how this this whole cave, at least the shape of the cave that you had initially seen, seemed to go as far as your eye could see and then a little bit further. But you do seem to be hitting some sort of edge of it. And as you had kind of followed them across one of these very thin bridges, they had stopped on one side and they seemed to be talking to one another. They're almost facing one another in some sort of way and you don't really know what's going on but to get a better visual and also just to see and hear better you do get a little bit closer than expected since it is at the edge of the cave in the wall you've been keeping a solid 100 feet but then that 100 feet turned into 80 and the 80 turned into 60 and right when you got about 60 feet away from them that square that black square seems to sludge forward once and the black cloak figure turns and let's roll initiative. No! no! <laughs> Wait, you told me I couldn't run in. I wanted to run in. Okay, but for the record, my last roll before this four was a 17. <sighs> anyway, okay, initiative. I guess. I guess. I guess. I guess. Right. She rolled for you too, right? Whatever. <laughs> yes. Actually, that's a good that's a good time to roll it. Uh, so you yeah, just add your modifiers to it. Okay. So you don't even have to worry. How far yeah. away and we, we still don't know exactly. I'm going to um, go ahead and cast C invisibility on myself. Um, as you guys were moving forward. Yes. Or C now. invisibility. Can I do that now? Oh, because you know that she's invisible. I'll say that as you're moving forward to look for Lala, you can do that, of course. And we will not have that count towards this round of initiative. So, real quick. One second, you guys. Got to write mm -hmm. down these modifiers right here. Yikes, okay. yikes, 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 yikes. All right. And the I think playing drunk is making me feel drunk. Because <laughs> when I come out yeah, of it, actually I still rolled feel the weird. Same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, up. so. Anybody above 20? Mm. Uh -uh. 20 to 15? 18. 18. And what's yours? 16. 18 for Lilith. 16 for Lala. 15 to 10? 14. 14, Janishka. Oh, and 10 below. Nine. Four. Nine and four, okay. Oh. <laughs> and I have like okay. two spell slots left. So to give you guys a little bit of a visual uh, description, you are exactly 60 feet away from them, hiding behind a nearby stalactite as best as you can, but when you peeked out from the corner, they seem to have spotted you like that. Um, 
you guys haven't heard anything stir up yet, so we do have to wait until we hit that initiative because they will have a first round of attack and battle, and then you guys will be alerted, and then you guys can go forward to your heart's desire. So, first up, technically on that, would be Lala. You catch that they spotted you. What do you want to do? Um, well, I still have Hunter's Mark on... On the cloaked figure, yeah. On the cloaked figure, so... I'm just gonna shoot at him. Shoot at him, you roll a hit. You know? Roll a hit. He spotted me. Uh, so that is going to be a 25 to hit. Oh, that'll on my, hit. On my, first, um, on my first attack. Roll for damage. Um, alright. Ooh, and then wait. Just wait, and it turns out to be one of our right? friends and we kill the bag. for my first arrow. Oh, nice. And then second one is going to be um, 21 to hit. That will hit. And I forget, does Hunter's, does uh, the bonus damage only apply, is it, is it per attack or is it per round? Um, I think for Hunter's Mark, it's, it's constantly active well, for any <laughs> shot that you can <laughs> uh, 10, another 10 points of damage. Nice. So, <laughs> as you knock an arrow and you shoot at this creature, you take very quickly in action, having realized you've been spotted. And they don't look too happy about this, even though one does not have a face. Cool. It is sludging towards you. Yes? Um, because of my Colossus Slayer, okay. if an enemy is below max HP, I get to add another 1d8. They are, uh, oh yeah, they are technically, because you added them, yeah. Uh, so they're going to take another eight points of damage. Eight. So I do, it would actually be very beneficial to know which was magical damage and non-magical in this. Um, okay, so... Because Hunter's Mark is technically magical damage. Yes, so. so on the first one, it was two points of magical damage. Okay, great. So that on would bring me down. On the second one, it's five and eight points of magical damage. Five and eight. So Thank you. Thir Thirteen in total. Yeah. Something around there. That sounds great. Okay, great. <laughs> so... Having been that, having done a bit more damage than you expected, it does seem like your arrows are not cracking into this creature as hard as you'd wish, but the magical properties of your arrows and your spells are definitely hitting this creature in some sort of way. So you have a feeling that this thing is going to be messing around a little bit with some very base damage stats. All right, so that is your turn. It is now their turn. So you guys right away, I'm going to say as your action, as the initiative's going down the order here, you catch a sound. Something almost like an arrow going through and cracking against something. Wait, it echoes in here and it's pretty loud. Mm -hmm. So you, you have a feeling something's something's we're, going no, we down. We're too far away. We're she, she, yeah, yeah, you're very far away right now. But it was like an, an initial All right, round. So in this that. creature is going to run up to you um, using its full speed and its full action and gets in your face. So this blackened yellow-eyed creature just runs up, uses its full action, its full speed to get right up in front of you. But if I'm, like, up towards the roof of the cave? Um, where, so yeah, so I had you down because of the way that the shape of the caves were, because okay. it was starting to peter down, that you okay. had to go to one of the ground ones. I could still uh, put you 10 to 15 okay. feet up, but it still is going to run around to try to get a better visual on you. Okay. So okay. you, we'll still say you're hovering 15 feet above it. not invisible anymore? No, I lose invisibility when I attack. Okay, sounds good. Moving along. It is now the other <laughs> creature's turn. Oh, fun. Um, so, this creature as well, this black kind of blob, slowly starts to squeeze its way well, inch by inch by inch by inch towards you. And it just keeps going towards you full speed ahead. Um, and just keeps getting closer and closer and you almost see it stretch out like a part of its body and start to crawl up like in your direction, almost as if it can make its body up long and stretch it. I don't like it. I don't like it. So. I just saw that I'm too. That is its turn. Okay. Row, uh, then we're gonna go top of the action. Lilith, so you heard, you hear something going down, you don't know what it is. Do I hear the direction that it's going? Yes, you do, I will say that. You can roll a perception check on your bonus action to get a really good understanding of what might be happening. Okay. Um, I'm just going to walk as far as I can in the direction that I hear 
Sounds good. Can I, would you like to roll a perception check to get a really good idea of maybe the, the direction of that? You can use survival. You can also use nature. Um, can I use athletics? No, no unfortunately. Um, eight. I'm sorry. Seven. It's hard to hear. You might need to use your full action to hear it. But you, your speed will not be gone. Do you want to try to use your full action to understand what's going on? You can roll a secondary check. I'm just going to start... Walking. All right. I'm just going to say you start walking in a general direction. And I'm dragging Drunishka. Sounds good. You're, you're pulling her behind yes. as best as you can. Unfortunately, you can't fully grapple her, but you say, follow me, okay. and you're kind of moving in that direction. So you move 30 feet ahead. Do you want to use your full action to move another 30 feet? Sure. All right. Is your speed 30 or 35? Do you know? Uh, 30. 30? 30? Okay. So 30, 30, so you get 60 feet ahead, and you're just kind of running up, up as quickly as you can in one direction. So... That is your turn. Lala, your turn. Uh, again? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, so there's the the blob yep. reaching towards me? Yep, square blob. And then... And it's about, it's, it's actually about still 10 to 15 feet away from you. Can I, uh, I can move, right? Yes. Okay, I'm going to fly up. Okay, you have another solid 30 feet above you. Cool. So fly up. All right, sounds good. You fly up 30 feet, but there's a lot of stalagmites and stalactites here, just to remember. Good. It'll make them make it harder for them to hit me. Okay. Um, but I guess I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the uh, masked figures, so I'm going to shoot at them again. All right, roll to hit. What dice was up this one? <laughs> that was working well. Yeah. Uh, 17 to hit. That'll hit. Roll for damage. Yes. <laughs> Eight of that was magical. And I'm gonna shoot it so, again. Yep. Do it, do it. Um, with a dirty 20 to hit. Yeah, I'll hit. Roll for damage. Yeah. Uh, eight and then uh, ten, two of which is magic damage. Okay. Great. So, take a second hit, fly up as high as you can, shoot two more arrows at that masked creature. I like um, the noises. <laughs> as you go to hit, um, as you uh, effectively hit this creature, it doesn't seem to have the strongest of armor, um, but it does seem to be, again, it's still able to resist that non-magical damage, and it's frustrating, but it does look like your arrows are still in its body, and it is kind of feeling a little bit of the presence of your arrows right now. So, that is your turn, Lala. Any, uh, that's your full action bonus action? Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Uh, Dronishka, it's your turn. Oh, God. So, do you want to move in the direction of the voice of Lilith? Yes, but did she bring me with her? No, unfortunately she can't. But can I have you roll on your uh, bonus action perception check to see if you can follow Lilith exactly? Do I want to rage yet? No. I don't think you guys know what's happening yet. You haven't yeah. heard like a big battle. You just hear some sort yes. of arrow crack. What is this for? Perception? Yeah, just to see where Lilith went. Okay, great. Um, it's a... I can't see. Ten? Ten? Yeah barely able to make it in the direction of Lilith. You run in the wrong direction for sure. 30 feet. And then would you like to use your full what? action to realize you were wrong, running in the wrong, di- action, the wrong, wrong direction and follow her? Yes. Yeah, so oh. you use your full action to backtrack a bit and run in the direction of Lilith. <laughs> yeah. So you're currently 30 feet behind Lilith and she's 60 feet ahead. So. Can I have a bonus? Um, your bonus action was to try to hear the sound of her voice oh, in the darkness. Yes. Unfortunately. Right. Um, Moira, it's your turn. Okay, so here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to uh, do three things. Yes. My bonus action is Shield of Faith on me, so I have a plus two to my AC, so it's a 19. Uh And then I want to call on Requiter, so I have light. So there's light, so now you can see exactly where Lilith is. And I want to run in the direction, my full speed, that I I can feel her bow in. Uh, Solid. So... In the direction that you can kind of see Lilith running in them. Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah. so that's 30 feet or 35 for you? 30. Uh, 30. Okay, 50. so you run that 30 feet in that direction. You and Lilith yeah. are side by side. Okay, so it is now this black blob's turn. So as it's kind of moving around in this kind of strange way, you hear like maybe a deep gurble 
And one of these bubbles comes out of it and pops, and you hear a like a very deep gurgly laugh Ew. that sounds almost as if it's being gurgled by something. Ew. Uh, can I have you make a, uh, a wisdom saving throw? Uh, sure. I mean, if gurgle, I have to. Gurgle, gurgle. Mm-hmm. Ooh, a six. Okay. Oh, no. You are now considered charmed by the creature. Oh, no! So, oh, it had just seen you on the customs vision as you had just moved up enough to, 15 feet up to get as high as you can. And... Oh, no. It was able to cast Charm Person on you. So, right now... Wait, wait, I have um, advantage against being charmed. Advantage? Yeah. Nice. All right, take that advantage then. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, uh, 15. A 15. Spell save DC of 15. <gasps> just made it. So, you're okay. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> you just made it. I totally forgot. I thought I could be charmed. Yeah. <laughs> so... You can be charmed. You I can be. It's just harder. It's harder. And as the laughter turn, soon turns into non-laughter, you can definitely tell this creature was trying to cast a very familiar spell on you that you have seen many times. And you can hear that this creature seems frustrated, but looks to you and then looks to the creature that you're shooting and slowly begins to retreat, it looks like, moving in the opposite direction of you right now just going further away, and this creature next to it that was sh- trying to <laughs> attack you in some way looks over to the creature and is like, like, there's fear in its eyes, almost like, why is it why is it leaving me? So, Rowan, your turn. How far am I from everyone? From everybody? What you're right now, you just, <laughs> last round, you used your full speed and movement, right? This is her first round, I think. Oh, because we this finally, because this round. is the first yeah. round. This is the first so full I, round of action. Yeah. So you haven't done anything yet, no. because you guys were just slowly making your way in one direction. Yeah. So, so what would you like I? to do? Um, you're currently exactly where everybody about else 30. was. No, about, I'm a, we're all about 30 feet ahead, except for Dradish, because she's a little... You, you guys are, uh, technically she ran a full 60. You ran oh, a full 60, so you would be at 30, you would be right next to Dranishka. Okay. Because I forgot How? you used your action for something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're 60 feet ahead of me? Lilith is 60 feet ahead, the two of them are 30 feet ahead of you. Okay, and how far ahead is the blob? You guys can't see any of that. It's, a, <laughs> oh. it's like there's a, a very large cavernous, cavernous space with, with bridges, okay. and the sound is coming from somewhere in the deep distance on the far right-hand side, but this is a solid 250-foot-long cave, maybe okay. even larger. So you can only see on the cusp of your vision as far as you can, which I think is like 120 or 60 feet, depending on the light. 60 feet. Okay, well, I'll just... I can only move 25 feet, so I'll just do that. <laughs> And your full action and your full your full speed? My full speed, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you can so get I'm 10 trying... feet right behind Lilith if you'd like. Okay, yeah. Because you, so you can use it twice. I am Lilith, and I'm assuming I can't see anything more. We Not right now, it. no. It looks like it might take another round to get in the direction that you need okay. to. But you're just running in the, in the direction All of right. this as quickly as you can. Um, can I save my second action to use as a reaction when I see something? Well, technically speaking, you do not get a second action. Uh, bonus action is a little different. Uh, okay. You can't usually use it as a reaction, but what do you want to do? You can ask me anything. Okay. Yeah. I I want to <laughs> I, I want to have entangle ready to cast on the blob if it's safe to do so. Okay, so that would require else. that would require a full action to do something like entangle. Okay. But okay. you can definitely get that ready in your head. You're like, if I yeah, see yeah, anything, yeah. I want to go cast entangle. You know. Okay. You're, you're psychologically telling yourself. Because I don't know there's a blob yet, so no. I wouldn't have that prepared. Okay. No, not yet. All right. But, as you guys are all running forward, and as this battle is occurring, we are actually at the end of the session No, today. I had a plan! Oh, so hold your thoughts for no. how this might continue, because battle's just begun. Oh, oh. my gosh. Welcome oh, back, girls, Thank to Dungeons we're and back. Dragons. We're back! Making running down. forward to save Lala. Really well. good. You're doing really good. <laughs> yes. Really well. I think I I'm doing my own, awful. Despite how small I, am. I need to sober up real quick. Um, yes. And this is great. Does that mean it's time to draw a winner? For the raffle. raffle. Yeah. Time to draw a raffle. Let's draw a raffle. Get your get as many exclamation mark raffle. Exclamation mark raffles in as you can right no, now no, before no, we draw. No, which no, I think no, is no. In the meantime, can I do a little shameless self promotion? Oh, we yeah. will go around and do shameless self promotions as we're choosing our raffle person. Don't forget, you get the Water Deep Dragon Heist book. So do it now. Everybody, follow me on Instagram at go underscore nino n i n o. 
my movie High Voltage is coming out in theaters yeah. this Friday in select theaters. If you go on my Instagram, I'll be posting about which cities it'll be in. I think it's playing in Denver, Chicago, LA, New York, Boston, Miami, a bunch of places. And then it's also available on video on demand. David Arquette, Luke Wilson, Perry Reeves, Ryan Donahue are in it. It's fun, don't take it seriously, turn off your brain, and just enjoy the ride. Yeah, also, amazing. she's in it, that's enough. Oh, yeah. That's enough. <laughs> and you have a show tonight if you're in LA, right? Yeah, if you're yeah. in LA, come to the Hotel Cafe, I'm playing at 8 p.m. Oh. Yay. Yeah. And I need some shameless self plugs, Miss I got Rachel. this. I'm on Girls Guts Glory. That's yeah. Funny. Also, yes. you did that amazing thing for Critical Role. I did! Oh. I was on an episode of Hamburger Helper. I talk about ACs. And yeah. skills and stuff. So definitely check that out because she's amazing Aww. in it. And there's awesome stills of you saying great things. <laughs> I think this might be my only thing right now, too. So thanks for joining <laughs> in. Yeah. Oh, everybody uh, find me handles. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at A Style Pixie. I'm on Twitter Pitch. as Sunny Seely. And I'm Kelly D'Angelo, your dungeon master today, <laughs> at You're a Wizard Kelly, because that's a new thing now. Yeah, it is. They yeah! were with me when I realized I could change my handle, and now I'm very happy with it. Um, and I, uh, I do a lot of different things. Uh, I'm on Sirens on Tuesday nights on D&D, so please check that out. I get to play in it. I'm not a DM, so that's awesome. And yeah. Satine is my DM, and she's amazing. Wow. Um, and then I also write musicals, and I just had a musical out called Starry, which a lot of you guys have awesome. been able to see. Yeah, able to go. If you're local, we're doing it over Thanksgiving weekend here, so please come, because I would love to have you guys there. Yes. Awesome. And you said your handle. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm Kellen Coleman, and I, you can find me on all the things as at Kellen Coleman, one L in Kellen, <laughs> K-E-L-E-N, C-U-L-E-M-A-N. Um, I guess right now, uh, Big Little Lies Season 2 will be coming out. I don't know when. Don't blink uh, that much. Uh, I think I'm in four episodes, but we're not sure. There's a lot of improv, so we don't know, I don't know how much uh, of that I'm in, but I went back just to kind of be there. Um... My show got canceled, so can't watch that. And then I don't know. I don't know what else. I'm. Sure, I think I'm forgetting things. I'm. Oh, I just shot a movie, but we don't know when that's. We'll follow, follow you in follow later. her to learn all about I'll it. I'll fill you in later. Yeah, follow, and then there's always something going on. And then lastly, Milo. Hi, I'm Alice Gretchen. You can follow me on Twitter at Alice Food, or on Instagram at Alice Gretchen, which is G R E C Z Y N. Um, I have nothing to promote for myself, but if any of you guys are Grey's Anatomy's fans, you can watch my boyfriend's show. I'll promote that. Um, season two of Station 19 just started airing on ABC. Thursdays, right after Grey's Anatomy, and there's some fun crossover episodes between the worlds. Yeah. And he's a sexy fireman. So, <laughs> yeah. And he was in an episode of Boys, uh, he was, uh, Boys, he Boys was Glory. He was on show as Boys Bloods Glory, Glory, and he was a little fawn. It was Aww. fun. Yeah, and he really wants to do another. Winner of the Rune Knight 13. Rune Knight. Rune Knight 13. Congratulations, Water Deep. Water Dream Dragon Heist. Thanks so much, you guys, for tuning in this week. Uh, We really appreciate it. We're so excited to be back, obviously. And as we get those cobwebs dusted off, uh, we'll see you next week, you guys. Thanks to all production and everything. Thank you. Thank you, George. Steve, everyone. Everybody. Andre. Melanie.